the fours who has them at eight and three. Cincinnati relies on a powerful right arm of quarterback Gino Gadouli holding all major passing records. This is an intense rivalry game. They play for the keg of nails, UC and Louisville next. The Cincinnati Bearcats hit the field with two goals in mind today, retain the keg of nails by beating rival Louisville and keeping slim ball hooks alive, a must win for any postseason possibilities for them. We are coming to you from cold and rainy Nippert Stadium in Cincinnati, Ohio. The regular season wraps up for the Bearcats in bowl bound. Louisville in a series dating back to 1929, part of the ESPN's 20 years covering college football. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Cincinnati. Glad you could join us today. Dave Ryan, Chris Spielman. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving, but you didn't get your fill of college football just yet. Chris, you know from playing college ball at Ohio State, rivalry games are big for these players. Oh, absolutely. And what makes this so special is the proximity of the two schools. A lot of these kids might have played against each other in high school and they know each other but the keg and nails you know what it stands for the toughest team that's why it's a great rivalry your kind of game yes it is man let's bobby, get going bobby petrino the louisville head coach to say the least folks has been involved in a storm of controversy this week a week ago thursday auburn officials including the athletic director and the president flew to kentucky secretly met with coach petrino who at first denied he was interested at all in the job at auburn replacing tommy tuberville he then recanted the statement apologized and said he's staying at louisville after all it's been a wild week well it has been a wild week and the interesting thing to see is how are his players on the field going to respond look he's a good football coach he's a wanted man that's fine but you got to have loyalty and credibility amongst your players. We'll see if he got to today and see how Louisville responds. The other thing you got to worry about is the credibility of his recruiting. If he goes into a home, a parent certainly has the right to say, are you going to be there or not? And how they know if he's going to tell the truth. He's got to earn that credibility back. How will his cards respond? How will Cincinnati respond? Final home game for 13 seniors trying to make it a memorable game. Big rivalry contest when we return to Cincinnati. They'll have these guys ready. And the one thing I know about a UC football team is that they will play hard and they will compete. That's a trademark of his coach football teams. We mentioned cold. We mentioned rainy. Both of those, 39 degrees and a light rain falling. It poured here yesterday and last night. We are the artificial sport grass surface here at Cincinnati. So it should hold up better than the real stuff would, but still will be slick. And Coach Minner to his team prior to the game talked about holding on to the football today. Well, anytime you go into a football game, the number one rule if you're a head coach or if you talk to the coordinators on offense, you want to have ball security, protect the football. On defense, you want to create turnovers. But the game is starting how I want to see it to start because it's the matchup of the day. It's a high-powered offense of Louisville against a high-flying defense of Cincinnati. Cincinnati plays defense, they play team defense, and they run to the ball. Roderick Clark is deep to receive the kick from Chris Manfredini. To begin our game today, Clark fourth all-time in Louisville history in return yards over 1,500 in his career. On a hop at the 10, Clark will begin our game today from the Queen City. He's about to the 27-yard line, and that is where Louisville and Stefan LaFours will take over 24-yard returns remain in the linebacker for Cincinnati involved in the special teams tackling. It's made quite an impression, has LaFours this year. First year as a starter, replacing the great Dave Ragona, fellow lefty. Leads Conference USA over 271 yards of total offense. Good speed, escape ability, Chris, as well. Watching him on tape, amazing speed when he's in trouble. Yeah, the other thing, Dave, he's done this under a new offense. Now, remember, John L. Smith ran a spread offense, and Coach Petrino brings in a multiple formation offense. It's outstanding for the adjustments that he's made. One back behind him is Michael Bush. He is the freshman who'll carry here, coming off a career effort more than 100 yards last week in their absolute obliteration of Houston when they put up 60 plus points. Sixth nationally ranked in total offense, more than 485 yards per game. Lionel Gates has stepped in for the injured Eric Shelton. And we just saw Michael Bush, the true freshman, who can play a little receiver, play quarterback as well. There's the offensive line. Watch Dan Coons make his team best 30-second straight start today. Travis LaFrou's brother, Bobby, is an offensive tackle for Louisville as well. Shotgun. Stephon LaFour is the lefty with flags down, and looks like it's a dead play. Procedure call against Louisville. Burn, 
start. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still. Second down. For the UC Bearcats, Coach Rick Mitter says the defense has played very well. The end are really the players to watch here. Andre Fraser, Trent Cole is playing with a bum ankle. Our great pass rushers. Twelve and a half sacks combined. Jamar Enzor, according to Coach Mitter, the best linebacker in the country. 46, the guy in the middle there. At 18 tackles and lost to Memphis last week. And the secondary, Davin Hart leads Conference USA ninth in the nation. Six interceptions this year. One more pick, a single season record for him at UC. Just more than a minute gone. First quarter, LaForest will throw. He's got J.R. Russell as top target outside the 30 to the 32-yard line. He needs about the 37, eight-yard pick up there, and it sets up a third down play. The thing about LaForest is, again, I want to go back to the point of doing this all under a new offense and this adjustment that he's made, and I like what he does. He'll pick his receivers. He knows the system, and he'll go. Right there, you'll see total offense. He's 271 and a half yards at rank first to Conference USA. That's strong quarterback play. First third down conversion to Temple quarterback draw. We talked about before speed. He moves to the 37. He won't get close. And for the first time, Louisville will be forced to punt. Kassan Love from Paris, California, one of the 13 seniors. For Rick Minner and Cincinnati makes the stop, and Bobby Petrino's team is forced to punt on its first possession of the game. It's a good series for Cincinnati, starting out at home, getting a three and out on Louisville. Now they have a chance for good field position. They force the kick and get a return. Brent Moody will punt. He'll release just outside his 20. Thaddeus Lewis is the deep man. Lewis has changed this year from the defensive to offensive side of the ball. We'll see him when Gina Gadouli leads UC next. Lewis lets that one hop at the 32. Takes a nice Louisville bounce. Out to about the 26. 41-yard kick there from Brent Moody. You know, Gadouli, coaches say, and in his own admission, Chris, been a disappointing season for the junior, who's had a record-setting year, eclipsing just about every UC quarterback mark. He's had a tough time dealing with a lot of some great receivers from years past. A complete overalls, we'll talk about, Chris, receiving core for the Bearcats this year. You and I saw them against East Carolina Labor Day weekend. This is a different group here offensively. Yeah, it is. And, and Gino needs to get on page with his receivers. That's been the problem all year. This is the last game of the season. They should be getting on track. Play action. Gadouli rolls right. Will throw on first down. Has some room. He's got good speed as well. Pretty tough. And he's forced out of bounds on that far side by Brandon Johnson and Montavious Stanley. Behind Gino, the team's leading rusher, Richard Hall, has dealt with several nagging injuries late in the season. Still a threat to break the big run. There has been a total overhaul with the receivers, including Thaddeus Lewis from the secondary. The offensive line led by Josh Schneideroff, who has battled injuries. Third year as a starter for him, he missed the Temple Army Rhode Island games after getting banged up. He's had shoulder issues. And Rick Minner telling us this week how critical the injuries have been. There are a lot of reasons this team is five and six and in all likelihood out of a ball. Underachieving by the coach's own words. Rick handoff goes to Carl Jones. Who's got first down yardage? He's outside the 40 on a seven-yard pickup there. Up front defensively, Scott Lopez leads for the Cardinals. 17 straight start, 37th for his 40. career. Watch Marcus Jones as well. Linebacker Rod Dan, team captain, averaging 10 tackles a game over his last five contests, eight against Houston in that route last week. And the secondary Kara Rhodes told us the memory of Cincinnati storming the field in Louisville last year to take the Keg of Nails trophy is unforgettable to him. He in the secondary, the defense, they want revenge this year. Another play action to do it. Looking for Paul, and the freshman instead goes over the middle. Incomplete, looking for Lewis. At about the 20-yard you know, line. Coverage there from Kerry Rhodes, the player we just mentioned. There's Lewis, who has made the conversion. Another part of that major change that Rick Menner had to undergo because of injuries and ineffective play. Well, I like the play call right there. It's a bootleg uh, play call. And what they're doing is they're bringing a back wide backside wide receiver on a deep post. Now, that's a tough throw for Geno because he's throwing back to the middle of the field while he's rolling left and throwing across his body. But he had, that, he had the guy open, and he has the arm to make that throw. Second attempt, 41 of UC on the first drive. It's Jones. Quick handoff. 
across midfield, stumbles ahead. First down yardage again for Carl Jones, a sophomore at Tampa, Florida, who's had to take over a lion's share of the carries because of Richard Hall's injury woes. 12-yard pickup there for him. Well, this is basically a zone running play where Carl Jones has the option to turn it inside or keep it going outside toward the point of attack. And how you can tell that if you're Louisville defenders, you read his shoulders. If his shoulders get square to the line of scrimmage, look for the cutback. If his shoulders stay turned to the sidelines, he's taking it. But what's happened is Cincinnati's offensive line is sustaining blocks. Louisville's doing nothing to shed blockers. Carl Jones, another converted defensive player for Rick Minner here in the Queen City. A quick pass there is grabbed. Wrestled back is Cedric Dolly, the junior from Linwood, California. Pickup of seven. And it'll set up the next play for the quarterback, Gino Baduli. Was the ball deflected? That's a good job by Cedric. Right there is the ball sure deflected. Was. He keeps his concentration, secures the football. And, and fighting for extra yards. See, the, 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 the Cardinal helmets are a little bit late getting there now. If you're if you're Louisville right now, you will see your defense. Eleven guys should have been hitting that guy because of him carrying defenders. You got to get to the ball. Right defensive tackle, the junior Bobby LaFew got a piece of that. Looks like Louisville may have jumped. Flags are down. Could be a free play for Jones, who lost the ball and picks it up. And LaFew put it down inside the 40-yard line. It should be an offside call against the Cardinals. See, Cincinnati has them on their heels now. Why? Because they're establishing the run. Defense. My guard penalty. Which really, Chris, was a big reason Rick Minner was in the Louisville penalties. This year, things have changed significantly. That's part of Bobby Petrino's makeover with this team. Now, John L. Smith. First down. John L. Smith did do a great job here at Louisville in getting them to their five straight bowl games before heading off to Michigan State. We heard from the referee. It is a first down after that offsides call. What's but a lot of the key yeah. numbers have gotten a lot better this year for Louisville. It's a different defensive package now, too. They ran a 3-3-5 last year. This year, they're basically a 4-3 defense. Big handoff. It's Jones again. He's got nowhere to go. Montavious Stanley, the sophomore from Albany, Georgia, his first tackle of the game, a two-yard loss. Well, Montavious does a great job of getting off the ball in the line of scrimmage and beating the block down. Now, if you're Cincinnati, you're saying, if my defensive end is going to crash down like that, I'm going to come back with the bootleg. That's what they have success. They'll give Gino time to work to the wide side of the field. Ain't on him. Stanley's 12th tackle for loss, Chris, this year. Totaling 27 lost yards for the opposition. Play action again over the middle. And Dolly's got it. Big pick up for Cincinnati and Cedric Dolly, the junior. Brought down Cedric by Brent Johnson Dolly. in the secondary Brought after a 22-yard game yard for UC. Well, I'll tell you, Anthony Colton does a good job of coming around from the backside guard to pick up the blitz on the defensive end. and gives Gino time. Watch the backside guard right here. He's come in. He picks up the blitz. Carlos picks up the blitz, and Gino's sitting at the skinny post. Bam, it throws a strike. Outstanding execution by Cincinnati in blitz control. Shotgun again for Cincinnati and Gino Caduli. After the big pickup, Jones up the middle, has some room, trying to steamroll an official en route to the end zone. He's got a first down pickup inside the five of the four for Carl Jones. Win him 13 more yards. Yeah, and Carl, and one man's loss, another man's opportunity. Carl Jones is getting an opportunity. He's picking up blitzes. He's running hard. And Louisville's acting like they don't even want to be here. Cincinnati's going with no huddle offense. And there seems to be a communication problem with Louisville because guys are looking at their sidelines, holding their palms up. What do we do? What do we do? Nice play of the drive coming up here for UC. A good start. Ball control offense, something Rick Mitter told us this week. He really wanted to emphasize against Louisville. Fakes the handoff, carries himself. Gino Gadulli piling toward the goal line. He's close. He is right on the goal line, but shy by about half a foot of the first points of our game today. Well, again, if you're going to play this type of offense, you've got to follow pooling guards. You see Gino follow his pooling guard into the hole. Anthony Colton and getting close to that goal line. Again, I'd sneak it right now. No problem. Because they're blowing them off the line of scrimmage. They're winning the pad level battle. They're doing everything they have to do. The bubble's right in the center. But if you have a 280-pound 280 fullback, go ahead and give to him. It's Kyle Kempter, who's so big, no one can stop him. And Cincinnati draws first blood today. The Keg of Nails rivalry game. They take a 6-0 lead. Well, again, it's just beating them up the line of scrimmage. Pad level, driving them off. Louisville's acting, at least right now, like they don't want to be here. Chris Manfredini 
And Coach Rick Minner telling us the special teams have been a mystery. Chet Irvin punting, Manfredini handling the short yard field goal attempts. He tacks on the PAT, first touchdown of Kyle Kester's career, the transfer from Indiana. The power game, as Chris mentioned, in the trenches. Total dominance on that drive by the Bearcats. They've got a 7-0 lead. Enjoy your new Durango. That drive, 10 plays, 74 yards, chewing up four minutes of clock, exactly what the doctor ordered if you're Rick Bitter. Well, again, a great start on defense in your first series, and a great start on offense your first series. And they did it by establishing the run and the pass. Carl Jones was outstanding. The offensive line was outstanding. Gino had open receivers. He was on target with the football. Something, frankly, Dave, that's been missing from this UC Bearcat offense all year. Chris Manfredini, kickoff again. Clark is the deep man. Roderick at his own 13. One of the top receivers for Louisville as well, looking for a gap, can't find it. He's wrestled down just shy of a 30. 18-yard return. So the fours get set to hit the field down by seven. We mentioned the disappointing season, Chris. It's been for Rick Minner and Cincinnati. There are reports and sources that we have spoken with since arriving to the Queen City that say this very well could be Rick Minner's last game as coach after a 10-year tenure. The university, in a statement today, told us nothing has been decided yet, only that athletic director Bob Goyne and Coach Minner will meet as they normally do after the season. Right, they do, and that's something where you've got to sit down and you have to evaluate yourself. Coach Minner's got to evaluate his players, his staff, and himself. And he's going to meet with the athletic director, and make no mistake about this, now, Cincinnati's moving to the Big East. And Coach Minner, it's a wonderful opportunity if he gets a chance to stay. But the one thing he's got to be looking for, Dave, as any head football coach, is some type of security that, yes, he is safe. So they're going to have an interesting conversation at the end of the season with the AD. Plenty of coaching news going on this time of year in college football. That is par for the course, and maybe more so in this game between Coach Minner and Petrino. On second down after the Gates run, it's Russell on the reception. Norton has him after absolutely no game. Good play defensively by Zach Norton. His senior from Tallahassee, Florida, his first tackle of the game. Four-yard pickup for Louisville. That's a way to close on the football if you're playing man-to-man -man defense like Zach Norton's playing there. You want to eliminate the yak yards or yards after catch, or some people say rack yards, run after catch. Zach Norton showed a great burst to break on the pass and make a good open field tackle where he didn't have to bring him down, but he secured the play. Norton overcame a shoulder injury to play in the Memphis game. Their loss last week. Third year for Zach Norton starting in the secondary for Rick Minner. And Stephon LaForge does not like what he sees. He'll call timeout. First used of his first half by Louisville. Keg of Nails rivalry game. Cards down I'm seven. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. 43rd meeting between these two I-71 rivals. Just 100 miles separates them. Quite a few Louisville fans have made the trip as well. LaForce on third down. Flags fall as he tried to lean forward toward the 40. He needed at least the 40-yard line for a first down. Yeah, he got a little bit of the face mask on the tackle there. And again, the multiple formations of Louisville and the... Personal foul. Face mask. Seat that. 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. The diversity of LaForce allows them to have the option in their game plan. We'll see if we can see the face mask right here. Now, 15-yarders. Yeah, he got his head jerked a little bit. I don't think it was intentional, though. It's a, you know, a judgment call, but I really do believe that no defender is going to tackle a guy by his face mask because it costs your team. And he's, he's, he's helping him out. Give me a call, ref. You got him. He got one. Yard variety, too. Automatic first down for the fours. Now the eye formation behind him. Gates, second man through. Lionel Gates is replacing... Eric Shelton, the team's leading rusher, hurt in that TCU game in the head-to-head -head collision. Five-yard pickup there from Gates. Shelton should be back for the bowl game. Forrest just surpassing 3,000 career yards. Only Chris Redman and Dave Ragone have done that in their great Louisville careers, respectively, and both en route to the NFL. Yeah, again, and, and talking to Coach Petrino, he's a little bit surprised at how good LaForce has played this year. But as the season got on, he got more comfortable with it. He gets more comfortable with the system. He's been able to connect both on run and pass. 
carry goes to Michael Bush, a freshman from Louisville, Kentucky, and was Mr. Football in the state of Kentucky. Chris Redman, one of the great quarterbacks in Louisville history, and Dave Ragona, fellow Southpaw along with LaForce, wrapping up his fantastic career in Louisville last year. And LaForce has taken over, really under-recruited Chris from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. LSU wasn't even interested, he told us. He had to, with his brother and father, compile five videotapes of his high school play to send out to coaches. One of those tapes went to John L. Smith, the former coach of Louisville. Well, I, I, I like his versatility, Dave, and to have a quarterback that throws as well as LaForge and yet have the ability to run the option, that gives you so much diversity on offense and puts so much pressure on defense. Cards have the first down. Drive continues with under six to go in our first quarter from Nippert Stadium. On the verge of having some frozen rain and snow here today as well. It's pretty miserable on the field. Um, and Michael Bush now, Michael Bush is a quarterback, came into Louisville as a quarterback, yet they, with the injuries, they know his versatility and his strength at 230 pounds. He's a power type tailback too. That's, that's a nice little uh, option to have. Another freshman, Chris Colby Smith, is the up back here, fullback spot, ahead of Lionel Gates. Gates carries on first down, tries the left side. Nice pick up, Lionel Gates. Doug Monahan, the strong safety, the junior from right here in Cincinnati, pushed him out of bounds on that far sideline. Seven yard pickup for Lionel Gates. Georgia Tech, Texas Tech, we've got college basketball coming your way. Feast Week presented by eBay continues here on ESPN2 preseason NIT championship and the Mass Mutual Classic as well. Ninth rate Florida and number three Arizona their head coach Lou Olson, all part of college basketball's Feast Week presented by eBay on ESPN2. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Second, and they'll call it two for the fours. Delay again. It's Gates again. Lionel's got first down yard. He's crossed to the 25 to the 22 yard line. Dewan Hagler brought him down. Second tackle of the game for him. Pickup of six for Gates, who looks very effective as he has since replacing Shelton after the TCU game. Well, the variety of formations that Louisville runs. That time they brought in four wide receivers with the illusion to throw the football, but teams. Uh, and Bobby Petrino, what they'll do, they'll put four wides out there to spread a defense, and you got to be alert on draw, especially in that type of down and distance. Gates had a career high 140 yards in that bludgeoning in Houston, where they put up 779 yards in total offense last week. Play action, four still has it, rolls, has Ronnie Jennings tight end, who's blasted by Johnson, hit so hard, and then eventually put down. Well, the one thing you like to see, first of all, is Ronnie Gent not falling down and securing the football, knowing he's going to get hit. LaForce kind of maybe should have run that football, thrown it at his feet because he saved your tight end, but it was a good play by Ronnie Gent. And I'm going to tell you what, Dave, one of the problems that I've seen in college football this year is tackling. Jason Russell had a chance to lay him out, but he did wrap his arms. He goes for the kill shot, and he's lucky he didn't break the tackle for a big play. You've got to wrap your arms if you're going to tackle. Russell missed the tackle. Adam Roberts finishing off Jent. Delay handoff. It's big Michael Bush again across the 15-yard line. Calicott brought him down. He's close to first down yardage again and needed to be just inside the 12. For yet another Louisville first down, and he got it. Yeah, you're smoking 230 up in there now. You want to get that guy before he gets to the secondary. Calicott did a good job of hitting them low, but nobody touched him until he got to the safeties. Now the Louisville offensive line kind of seems to wake up here a little bit, and they're starting to establish the line of scrimmage toward their side. Tenth play of the drive coming up here. Michael Bush in high school in Louisville. Quarterback, running back, linebacker, defensive back, did everything. He'll play some receiver, some running back, maybe even take snaps as a quarterback as well. Colby Smith, the carry. Sniffing out the end zone. He's inside the five, down to about the two-yard line. Very close to yet another Louisville first down. Nine-yard pickup for another freshman, Colby Smith. Colby Smith, again, a, a true freshman, gets a lead block right here, and the good vision and patience of the true freshman. Hitting it up there, refusing to be tackled, keeping his legs going, and always falling forward. Good backs will always fall forward. Very close to a first down. They will measure. We talked about Gates and Bush, couple true freshmen. Michael Bush, Chris, averaging 5.7 yards a carry. They did get it. It'll be first and goal for Louisville on this drive, looking for the equalizer against Rick Minner. Well, let's talk about yeah. production from true freshmen. Well, that's that's the type of recruiting you need to have now. If you're going to jump up a conference to the Big East, 
and start playing for national championships, I'm assuming that's the goal, then you need to have these type of recruiting classes. Career day in that bludgeoning of Houston last weekend. The big tackle on the offensive backfield right here. Follow him. He's taking the ball. That big Kirk Quarterman in there. See, that's big white pants in the backfield. I'm not used to seeing that big of white pants in the backfield. Those are big. Penalty will cost him five, though. A little jumbo set here for Coach Petrino's team. We've seen them on tape throughout the season use that quite a bit. Right, it's out now. See, this, look how big those white pants are now. That's, that's not a running back white pants, Dave. <laughs> 350 pounds, six foot five, Kurt Quarterman. He's out now. Kamer comes in as the up back. It's Smith who lines into the tailback here. Remember Rick Petrino has Enzor on him now. The team's leading tackle with 117 coming in. That's Jamar's second tackle of the game. The star middle linebacker we told you about for Cincinnati. What's Keep in good? mind that Bobby Petrino, Chris, has the NFL experience in Jacksonville and will use a variety of sets. We see Smith as a fullback and a tailback. Well, you know, anytime you can do that and bring that and have the kids to run that type of offense, it's certainly an advantage. It's not that they run a lot of different plays. They'll run the same plays out of different formations to try to confuse the defense. Trying to do it again. Haskins is the man in motion. Colby Smith, left side, corner, end zone, touchdown. Five-yard touchdown run for the freshman Colby Smith and Louisville a point away from tying the keg of nails rivalry tilt here in Cincinnati today. DJ Kamer and, and, and Ronnie Jen get great blocks on the outside to allow him to spring to the corner if you're Cincinnati. The one thing you want to do, Dave, never, ever give up contain. Never let anybody outside of you. They got outflanked. Easy run for six. Here's Nate Smith, a little unorthodox approach, but bangs it through. He's now 44 of 45. Another Smith got the job done, and Colby, the freshman, with a five-yard touchdown run, tying this game 7-7. Just over two to go in the first quarter. Chris's Heisman bout. Ever want to see what a real Heisman bout looks like? We'll show you. 69th annual award is coming up in New York. That's all coming up. As Colby Smith scored the touchdown run a moment ago for Louisville, getting the ankle taped up. I'm sure he's ready to go for the next Cardinal drive. 12 play drive there. 70 yards over six minutes. Uh, first quarter clock chewed up. And Colby capped it off with a five yard touchdown scamper. Mostly the run game in the wet conditions, Chris. And, and Louisville woke up. I mean, they came in this game, and they got smoked on offense and defense the first series, and they woke up and they took the ball and took the physical battle back to Cincinnati. Now we'll see how you see response. Smith to kick off. Taken there by Tedrick Harwell. Try the left side. Now he'll go right up the middle. Little room there across the 20. To about the 23. And that is where Louisville will take over. A Brown off the return. Up nine yards. Cincinnati's ball. Brown. Has been about we told you about. Exactly what it looks like. Hereby designate. That's the official bout. That is going to you. And I got to make sure that I keep that up at, at home now because my, my three year old wanted to throw in uh, Barney as my first choice, <laughs> Ernie the second choice, then Bert was coming up in the runner or third choice. So I got to make sure I keep that. She had a sharpie to it the other day. I, Watch I, I just it. caught her. Yeah. Watch it. Got to use a the pencil there. <laughs> Kermit the Frog might sneak in with a vote. Gino Gadule and Cincy again with a ball. By action, but it was still got it on that far side. He's bumped out of bounds. Brandon Johnson from Birmingham, Alabama, made sure he was out. Top three for you, Chris Eli Manning from Ole Miss, having a great season again with 27 touchdown passes. How can you argue against the year Jason White and top rank Oklahoma have had? And Larry Fitzgerald, many say the best player in the nation. Yeah, well, I have to see Larry Fitzgerald, who I, he is a great player, and I want to see what he does against Miami. And of course, I want to see how Jason White just had an outstanding year coming off ACL injuries all over the place. But I want to see how he performs in the Big 12 championship game. So I, I, I'm going to be late filling mine out because I'm going to give everybody the perfect opportunity to win it or lose it. It's Jones again. Very effective in that scoring drive for the Bearcats. Rhodes stopped him along with Rod Day, the senior. 
Will linebacker for Louisville. We'll pick up a three yards for Carl Jones. Now Cincinnati again going with the no huddle offense and you can do that when you have a guy that's played as much as Gino Gadouli. And if they get a hurry up type offense going here they can establish because Louisville's late getting lined up. They're late with their substitutions. That's something that if I'm you see I'm with Rusty Burns I'm saying hey let's hurry up. Let's get a hurry up offense going here. Long snap count for Gadouli. Check He's checking the sideline, see if he can run the play. Red clock under five. Gets it off. Gets it to Thomas. Hannibal Thomas, the JC transfer, first catch of the game, and what a story he's been. 13-yard pickup for UC. Did not attend any summer sessions or workouts, just came in the fall preseason camp took him a while to learn the system get in division one a shape and yeah, he's had a big role there's Hannibal Thomas aware of where the first down markers are and is finding the soft spot of the zone see that's a zone coverage anytime you see a defensive back drop off then I like the effort after he catches the ball he says not one of y'all are going to get me it's going to take five or six great job by Hannibal Thomas knowing where he's on the football field and securing a catch knowing he's going to get hit and do something after you make the catch outstanding effort First option, Gadouli not there, so he'll keep forward midfield. He put down by Ron Day and in the right tackle, Scott Lopez. Saturday, ESPN, a full day of college football. First at noon Eastern, Toledo meets Josh Harris and Bowling Green in the Mac West title game, hanging in the balance. Alabama-Hawaii, a big game at 7.45 Eastern time, could have an impact for LSU and USC's bid for the national championship game. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Big stand, of course, in the BCS, Oklahoma, and Southern California will meet. Jones again. Stood up by Brent Johnson across the 50. He has got first down yardage to about the 46. Uh, Louisville seven-yard gain, and again, the ground game has been effective. And Rick Mitter told us, Chris, this week, it's been such a mystery, a question mark, once Richard Hall got hurt, their top runner, yeah. would Jones step let, up? Let me tell you why it's effective, because there's absolutely no penetration by the Louisville defensive line. They're dancing with guys. They're not getting off blocks. There's nobody penetrating in gaps, and they're just getting pushed out of the way. So Jones is just picking his way and finding the open hole and hitting it. So in the first quarter, Carl Jones, a uh, big 15 minutes. Rick Minner enjoying dominance, enjoying a Kyle Kester touchdown run. Colby Smith for Louisville answering, and that's why we're deadlocked. 7-7, seven, seven, one quarter complete from Cincy. Today trying to snap a two-game losing streak. They've lost three of the last four after dropping a 21-16 decision at Memphis last week in Conference USA play, and also trying to avoid their first losing season since 1999. They've been in every game, Dave. They've had opportunities to win. They just haven't been able to close out. 7-7 seven seven team a year ago. They've got a three-year bull streak on the line. Here's Jones crossing the line of scrimmage. A powerful run into the secondary. Another first-down scamper for Cincinnati. Brent Johnson brought him down. 11-yard pickup for Jones. Our exclusive KSC game track. The Bearcats scoring early thanks to Kyle Kester's first career touchdown run. A transfer from India. Never played for the Hoosiers. Colby Smith answering for Louisville. And is this, in fact, Rick Minner's last game? All-time leading win man in UC history, surpassing Sid Gilman earlier this year. That incomplete to Hannibal Thomas. Chris, he's made four bowl games in his last six years. Led UC to his first league title since the 60s, so he's obviously turned the program around. Is it enough is the question. Well, uh, you know, only one man or a couple people are going to be able to decide that. Look, I like Rick Minner. I think he, uh, he, he does a great job with this program. He has the kids play hard. They play together. And it's tough. It's tough to recruit down here. Once all the facilities get done, in addition to the stadium, joining the big, it'll give him a bit better chance to recruit some of the better players. Jones again, Rhodes involved in the stop. Carry from Alabama. One of the, we saw the statistic a moment ago on the bowl games he's made. He's finished top two in Conference USA the last three years, heading into this season. Has been a disappointment as the flurries do in fact fly on third down for Gino. Checks the sideline again. Yeah, he's changing the play. As they have the coach over there, they'll give him a play to run versus this defense. Gadouli rolls right and some trouble throws it away. That's one thing when we met with him, Chris, early in the season, Gino really felt he was improving a lot on making the right decisions in crunch time. Brandon Johnson providing pressure on Gadouli as he was flushed out of the pocket right. Although you watched them. 
Bearcats on tape some games earlier this year. He still throws the ball up for grabs at times. Yeah, well, he made a good decision there because I'll tell you, Antoine Harris, the corner, had great coverage in man to man. Louisville came with the blitz, and Gino saw that there was nothing he could do with his feet or his arms, so he dumps it out of bounds, giving them a chance to get three on the board without taking a dumb sack. Chet Irvin will try the field goals. Also, their punter, he has longer range than Chris Manfredini. 48 yard attempts. Missed it. Not quite enough leg. So the snow does, in fact, pick up in Cincinnati. Stephon LaFours hits the field when we return. Will you describe my game? We started our day at about 39 degrees, folks. I think the temperature is steadily declining. Snow flurries are evident here in Cincinnati. Cards take over. Stephon LaFours throwing for Russell. Broken up Zach Norton. Nice play defensively. At uh, the 37-yard line of Louisville, it'll be second down. Again, the formation right there will tell you that it was passed because you have an offset back, which is in no position to run football, or is he in a position to be a lead blocker? They go to the three-step. Zach Norton, great recognition on the route. Gets a good jump on the football. And I'll tell you, if that ball was a little bit lower, Zach could be going the other way. Three interceptions on the year for Norton. Come on. Pass breakups in their early season win when things look so promising for UC against West Virginia. Probably a 3 0 start. But the tide has turned. A big slump since then. His first hurdling tackle is ball loose. Ball loose at the 32 yard line. Bearcats say they've got it. I don't believe the officials agree. They say the ball was down prior to losing it. It's a great job by Hagler, the linebacker, coming up. Defeating the block and making a tackle, and as a rule, as a linebacker, never do you want to give one for one. And you're going to see him come into your picture right here watching. Defeats the block. Oh, get out of my way so I can make a play. He got, oh, that was a beautiful linebacker play. Defeats the block, disregards him, and makes a great hit and causes a fumble, at least an opportunity for a turnover. Bush going head over breakfast there, Chris. Yes. That's dangerous. Get out of my way. That's what beautiful. Happened to Eric Shelton against TCU with a neck injury. That looked like a dangerous landing point for Bush. Over the middle, incomplete, looking for Russell at the 46 yard line of Cincinnati. LaFour's misfires, but a flag does come down. That's in the late hit territory. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense. 15 yards. Andre Fraser, Chris is the guilty party of the junior. Yeah, Andre's got to, we got to take a look at it and replay him because I'm always skeptical about these roughing the passer calls, but they do want to protect the quarterback. He steps into the throw. And here comes Fraser. Oh man, man, you got to, you got to play a little football now. Snow's coming down. You're in the state of Ohio. You got to play football. Put flags on him if you don't want to get hit. <laughs> Not tough enough for you, huh? It's a keg of nails oh, yeah, game, Chris Spielman. Tell the referee it's a keg of nails. It's all about toughness, but there has been an effort, of course, to protect quarterbacks. Norton coming in on a blitz from the corner spot, but it's a handoff to Gates. He's wrestled down there by Dewan Hagler, who makes his fourth tackle. Two-yard pickup for Lionel Gates. Now, it, it was a shoulder bump, Dave. It, it wasn't like he wrapped him up and drove him to the ground. That's what, Now, that's rightful to give a penalty when something like that occurs, but with a shoulder bump, let him play football. Stefan's a tough guy. Well, Cincinnati's confused on defense here. I'm trying to substitute. Get caught up with that. Play with the guys you have. Shotgun for the junior LaForce. Just shy midfield on second down. A lot of time. Russell brings it in outside the 30. J.R. Russell, top receiving threat for Louisville. Big first down play for the Cards. Give them 19 yards there. Russell second in Conference USA receptions. A game 5.6 coming yeah. in. Zach Norton's down there talking to the referee. Why? Because he gets pushed off here. He gets good protection. Time to throw the football. He got a little push off there. J.R. Russell runs a good route. He got away with the push off. But I like J.R. Russell's adjustment on the football, turning the hips. Zach Norton got pushed off. That was the reason. That's a good job by Russell. If he can get away with the push off, push off all day. Michael Bush, the big freshman, 230 pounds. Pile driver effect through the Cincy defensive front. Pick up of five. 
Well, here's the first down play. Yeah, here's the matchup we were looking for today. And Louisville has a high powered offense. And well, you see that 485 yards a game first, and you see his defense 315 yards. And that's a little bit deceiving. You see always plays good defense, and that reflects their head coach, obviously Rick Minner, a defensive guy. The one thing I've always admired about them, they get a lot of people to the football and they play tough. Outstanding numbers put up this year. Louisville offensively and defensively, especially though with the ball. A little option play. It's Bush on the pitch right. Driven out of bounds by Hagler again. Appears to have enough for another. Louisville first down, seven yard pickup for big Michael Bush, who can play three positions for Louisville. Right now, it's pretty effective at running yeah, back. He is, and, and I'll tell you who's effective is Stefan LaFleur because he knows the defense. He there audibleized or checked off to the option back to the boundary because of the rotations of Cincinnati safety where they had a one-on-one -on -one situation. That was a great job of LaFleur's putting in his team, his offensive team, in a position to succeed. Sets up first and 10 for the cards from the 20 of Cincinnati. Play action again. Ronnie Jet the tight end. Nice move open field. 15. Boom his way toward the 10 yard line. And the large contingent of Louisville fans who made the 100 mile journey up I 71 enjoy the 10 yard pickup from the multiple conference USA first teamer, Ronnie Jent. Well, what you do is you come now with the fake option. You're going to see Jent come here. They're going to send the guy in a double layer route. And LaForce is going to have his choice, but Ronnie Jett's a sure-handed guy, and I like the move after the catch. Hagler had him in his sights. You got to keep your feet and see what you hit, but Jen could do some damage. But it was a nice call, a two-layer pass on the throwback. Outstanding play call by Bobby Petrino. Jett now has caught a pass, Chris, 37 straight games, and 38 in the last 39. There's a run just a couple of yards from Michael Bush again. We roll down to five minutes remaining in a very tight second quarter. Now they come in with Kamer, their fullback, as a lead blocker, which they've been successful. And where they've been successful out of the I formation is not running inside, but running outside. Cincinnati's defensive ends, Dave, they're good pass rushers, but they're a little light in the pants. When you're light in the pants, they can't get off blocks. We'll see how it is on a running play here. Five minutes into our second quarter. See how close the numbers are. Very tight. Almost dead even. Clark is the man in motion behind LaForge on second and goal. Stefan keeps play action over the middle. Has a man. Touchdown. Brought in by Richard Owens. Seven-yard touchdown connection. LaForge to Owens, and Lobo takes the lead. It's a good job of ball handling by LaFleur, something of a lost art in the quarterback position, but it's all set up by the run. Bootleg has no effect if you cannot run the football. If you're able to run the football, you can run the bootleg, and it's dealer's choice back there for LaFleur. Pick who you want for six. And he did. Snow swirling and picking up. With its intensity today, Nate Smith has the PAT blocked. You can return that. Roberts got it. Norton had a hand on it, trying to pick up and bring it back for two. And it goes with the block PAT against Bobby Petrino and Louisville. Yeah, Adam, Adam Roberts does a great job. What you want to do is you want to get skinny. He gets skinny, splits a double team, gets up in the air, elevates, gets a big pull, saves the point. Take a look at the touchdown. It's play action. It's set up because they've been able to run the ball. The floors is just waiting for Owens to come to the back of the end zone. Good job of catching the ball with your hands and not your chest, but he's wide open because everybody's getting sucked up on a run fake. You don't have to get sucked up on a run fake. You can hear play action. Lyman on a run will make all kinds of snorts and grunts. On a pass, they want to be finesse guys and real quiet. <laughs> you can hear it. Tell, huh? Yep. Third touchdown catch of the year for Owens on his 12th grab of the season. Deep man is Tedrick Harwell. Grabs on the bounce outside the 20-yard line of UC's wrestled down at about the 24, 15-yard return. Saturday, SBN, a full day of college football. First at noon Eastern, Toledo takes on Bowling Green. A big game there, Josh Harris and the Falcons with a Mac West title hanging in the balance at 7.45 Eastern time. Hawaii, Alabama, potential impact for the LSU Tigers and USC Trojans bid for the Sugar Bowl. Maryland Wake in the middle of that 3.30 Eastern time. It's a big game in the ACC. 
as well. Turns pole down one more time at a Ralph region. Talk about turning a program around. Yeah, Ralph's done a great Baby. job. First and ten. Gadula in trouble, gets out of it, then throws in the run. It is almost intercepted. Flags come down. Ball incomplete. Johnson, Brent Johnson at the 45, had a great opportunity to pick. You know, Gadula. As man. he dropped it, a flag was dropped behind him, so we'll check out the laundry. A little bit of hand fighting going down here where the ball was thrown. A, a good composure by Gino now of it's not throwing him the screen pass. And if he's going to throw it away, throw it away. Don't throw it up for grabs. That's a part of Defense, 10 yards penalty from the line of scrimmage. By rule, a forward pass crossed the line. First down. A decision-making choice by Gino. That's what's been his his kind of his enemy this year, or his whole career, is poor decisions. He's got better, but he's got to get a little bit more consistent. Again, you see the no huddle. Gino will call the play, then he'll look to the sidelines. And he'll just check with the coach to see if he wants to run that play. If he does, the coach will point to the ground and say, run the play. If not, he'll give him hand signals to change the play. Different speeds of the no huddle that we've seen with Cincinnati all year long. Eddington Derrick gets a carry, first of the game for him. Nothing doing for Eddington. Our athletic trivia question, which former Louisville coach brought a live turkey to midfield. <laughs> mm. Three game coin toss, Thanksgiving game. He sounds eccentric. Yeah. Could that be? <laughs> I wonder. The answer coming up. Everyone jumping the line of scrimmage prior to the play. Looks like it'll be an offside. Yeah, they almost brought in a great catch, but it won't count. Yeah, they almost got a free play off there, Dave, but there was contact before the snap of the football. Right the snap. Encroachment by contact. Keep that. Five yard penalty. But let that be a lesson that you always try to finish the play. And I like what Gino did was throw the ball down the field because sometimes they will not blow that play off and you will get a free play. Penalty so far. Fit for 30 yards for the cards. Amobi Okoye, who's off the field now, the true freshman. Folks, we mean true. He's 16 years old. Offensive tackle mm. was the guilty party on that offsides call. We'll tell you more about his incredible story throughout the day. Louisville shows blitz. Maturity again from Gadouli. He'll take his time to check with the assistant coach for Cincinnati on the sideline and get into a new play. Shotgun. In the pocket he goes. Over complete looking for Lewis. Over the middle. Coverage from Antoine Harris. Romeo Okoye, folks, born in Nigeria. A couple years back moved to Huntsville, Alabama. And because his aptitude was so high was put up in his class average of 3.5 having just learned english in high school in alabama graduated at 15 years old that's an incredible story bobby petrino saw a table and said come on you're gonna play for me right away and as a 16 year old the youngest player in division 1a football Corey has had a key role for louisville all season Cincinnati one and two so far, third down conversions, trying to make a two or three over the middle, way overthrown, looking for Lewis. Again, Harris on the coverage. And UC fans would like to see a flag. They won't get it. Amobi Okoye, there it is, to prove it, 16 years old. Uh, we won't go for pronunciation on the middle name, okay? <laughs> yeah, he, just, he just got the driver's license. That's there, right. And, and, yeah, the middle name, yeah, I don't know. But uh, I wonder if that's temporary tag or temps, or is that the, the real thing, man? Just turned 16 in June. Amazing yeah. story. He wants to be a doctor. Is in a pre-med program at Louisville. Punt nearly blocked. Haskins, the deep man, runs into Bush's own man in front of him on the kick from Irvin. And it takes a nice Bearcat bounce inside of 20 to about the 17. That is where after the 44-yard kick from Jet Irvin, Louisville takes over up by six. About 100 miles, just under two hours. That's what they play for every year, folks. The keg of nails, a 43rd meeting between these rivals. UC leads the series, 26-15 and one, but Louisville's won four of the last five. I'd like to make it five of six. Up by six here, second quarter, just over eight to go in the second period. Haskins on the end of the round, loses his footing. Remember how slick it is out there. Zach Norton brought him down on the near side. Gain of two for Haskins. 
Four of the last five, I told you about Louisville has won, but Cincinnati and Rick Minner have the advantage in this series. You talked, Chris, with both coaches. They're first to admit that Bobby Petrino and Louisville, Kentucky is their first rivalry. For Cincinnati, it's Miami, Ohio. Right. But right behind those games in terms of intensity for coaches and players and fans is this game. Yeah, they love to get after it. And again, it's important for recruiting, too. Anytime you can put a positive note on your season and beating a rival when you go and recruit the same type of kids, it gives you a little bit of an edge. The lay handoff. Gates makes a nice move on a stutter step as he's past the 27 yard line where needed for a first down pickup of 12 for gates yeah franklin calicott comes up from his safety spot with a poor angle and gates gave him a leg and took it away and showed great speed on the outside you'll see calicott come into your pitcher number four watch it he's in position to make a tackle and he just gets out running the corner he cannot break down I, I don't believe in breaking down as a defender i believe in taking the fight to the guy close the gate in front of the ball and bring him down if you stop he'll make you miss 231 all-purpose yards last week for Gates against Houston and the evaporation of that here is stuck on the forest open field the forest the 30 the 20 sprinting for the end zone still on his feet right after he's in touchdown Louisville 69 yards step on the forest are you kidding spectacular run staying on his feet talk about strength and speed for the force what you have is a great effort, and it's set up by the good play thing. You get a good block on the outside. There's a block by receivers blocking downfield, and LaFleur showing great effort. Now, Zach Norton will come to your pitcher with a chance to take him out, and he plays pity pat with him. If you do not wrap up, I'm going to say this again, you have no chance. Close the gate in front of him. Zach closed the gate behind LaFleur's ran through the tackle. Cost Cincinnati an opportunity for a snap with the football. Great job by Stephon LaFour's understanding and playing to win and running through people, not to people. Chris, you made a great point about ball handling for a quarterback. His ball fakes are outstanding. Well, we'll miss the PAT in this second quarter. Remember that with 9.29 to go on that block point after. Now timeout called by Cincinnati as they're set up to go for two. And folks, we told you about the speed of LaFour's. You watch film escapability is something that comes to mind and just plain old foot speed this is a guy who sat behind dave ragone at louisville for two years had less than 20 career passes attempted heading into the season was just an afterthought not only is he taken over he's had a record-setting season well he has david anytime anytime that you have the ability to throw the football then you add this to it first of all great ball handling sticking that ball in there now a nice cut and speed down the sidelines. And I want you to watch the end of this picture. This is what I see in college football all the time. It drives me crazy. Is guys aren't going to wrap up. Zach Norton came in there and just tried to push him. It looked like he tried to grab the football. When a guy's going for the end zone, you come in and you put your head in front of those numbers. And Zach put his head behind the numbers. He runs through the tackle. You get a touchdown. And Stephon LaForge is going to compete. He's not going to let a half a man bring him down. Now, if Zach would have came in with a... Closing the gate in front of the ball, putting his head across the bow, he would have tackled with a full man. Then before would have went down. But, it's not, a, but he set the tempo. Mm, not good technique at all from Norton. It's about a want. It's a, tackling is all mental. It's about a want to take a guy down, and when you take him down, you hit him as hard as you can. You can't do that because when you close the gate behind the ball, put your head behind the ball carrier, you're tackling with one arm. Guys are too good and too athletic at this level of college football to be brought down with arm tackles. Saw the great overall numbers for LaForce, who was phenomenal in their game against Houston last week. Even the TCU loss early in the season where they came so close to beating the then undefeated Horn Frogs. And Zach Norton, looked like Chris, there might have been some indecision as Norton was closing in with his angle down the sideline. Do I push him out of bounds? Do I tackle him? Do I go for the ball? And he got lost somewhere in the you middle. You knock him out of bounds. Yeah. There's no pushing involved. You knock him out, man. You got a quarterback running, you take him out. Keg of nails game for you. That's right. <laughs> Toughness. Not there for Norton, that's for sure. Going for two. Off the timeout from UC. LaFour is another ball fake up the middle. He goes. He's got two points for Louisville. Composure, David. Bad snap. Great hands, not panicking. The ball fake again. Running a tackle trap with the quarterback up the middle. Easy pickets. Right now, Cincinnati and Zach Norton have no answer for star Louisville quarterback Stephon LaFour. Not only the long TD run, the two-point conversion as well.
Last Thanksgiving. 21 straight points, Stephon LaFours. And Louisville, now a 14-point lead. A couple moments ago, he was signing back home. Amazing story LaFours will tell you about. Whole family is deaf, except for him. It is cold, folks, and windy. Flurries are prevalent now in the Queen City. It's getting darker as we speak. Stephon, father, mother, uncles, paternal grandparents are all deaf. He's the only hearing, fully functional hearing member of his family. He says at times growing up it was difficult because he had a sign for everyone in his family that now embraces the differences. Up the middle for Lewis, trying to get things going for Cincinnati to the 24 yard line. The only hearing member of his family, Stefan LaForce. You don't want to know. Talks more about that. Uh, I have a deaf family. Uh, my mom and dad are deaf. I have one brother, older brother, that's deaf. And, uh, you know, basically I'm the only hearing uh, person in my family. Uh, grandparents are all deaf, uncles are all deaf. And, uh, you know, I'm just blessed to be uh, hearing, uh, to come out, you know, hearing like I am and uh, you know I think God did it for a reason uh, you know to help communicate with my family uh, whenever they need me to interpret or anything like that so I think it's good incredible character that young man from Baton Rouge Louisiana Jones to carry well the recognition that uh, God has given the gift of hearing is just outstanding enough and what it also does David and when you grow up in circumstances like that or tough situations in your life you develop leadership skills, and that's certainly been evident today on the football field and, and, and perseverance. His dad, Larry, played football for the Louisiana School of the Deaf. His mom, Susan, a cheerleader for the Texas School of the Deaf, and they met when the two schools played. His mom lost her hearing in a childhood battle with the mumps. Play action fake to Kester, throwing. Incomplete, looking there for Cedric Dolly about midfield. Gadouli was hit as he released. Stefan's older brother, Eric, a star high school player in Louisiana, then for Gauntlet University, the deaf school in Washington. And as we mentioned, he was signing back home, telling mom and dad, that was for you. His last touchdown run and the two-point PAT. Yeah. He said so many accolades today. We're not sure what he's referring to. This is a big third down right here now, David. Cincinnati has got to do something to get some life back. They need to convert. One of three so far, third down conversions. Gadouli in trouble, flushed out of the pocket, scrambling for his life. Coming back to make a catch is Ross, and it's called incomplete. Looked like there had come back a couple yards to make the grab. Now the back judge sprinting in from his spot, saying that was an incomplete pass, and that forces a fourth down kicking situation for the Bearcats. Yeah, the line judge right there was on the spot, but he could not see it. He was shielded. There you see. Yeah, the ball does bounce, and that's an excellent job by the back judge. He had the best angle to make that call. But again, opportunity missed by Cincinnati. It's something that's been happening to him all year. Thus, then, you have five and six as opposed to a winning record. Missed opportunities. Brandon Johnson providing pressure, knocking down Gadouli, forcing the quick throw. Irvin the punt. Haskins is back deep, stands in his own. 32. Robert Haskins and leads one tackle at the 31 yard line, and that is where Louisville takes over. 40 yard kick, one yard return for Haskins from Louisville. Had the Aflac trivia question earlier in our broadcast which former head coach brought a live turkey, not a cooked turkey during <laughs> Thanksgiving time? <laughs> we know him well. Yes, it's our own Lee Corso against Tulsa in 1969. Mm. Is he coach? <laughs> Look at the hair. Look at the sideburns, Coach Corso. Love it. I like the hockey sticks. Yeah, the hockey stick sideburns are nice. So spunky, so full of life back then, as he is, of course, now for us on our family of networks. Here's Gates. Tries the right side. Final picks up three yards on the first down run. Jamie Murphy's first tackle of the game, the linebacker from Tallahassee, Florida, the junior. It's a good shot by Jamie Murphy. That's closing the gate in front of the ball. And they brought again at the corner blitz. The corner's not getting there. They need to time that up better. But Louisville's doing what they want. They want to run it, they'll run it. They want to throw it, they throw it. And they're successful doing both, which puts a ton of pressure on Cincinnati's defense. 
saw Murphy hobbling off a bit. Looked like he took the brunt of that hit. And a collision with Lionel Gates. Timeout call here by UC. They've got one left in our first half, down by 14 points. What they're trying to do is they're trying to match personnel with Louisville. And you can't do that because of all the different formations Louisville has. They're running people in and out, and there's been confusion. And that's the second time they've taken a timeout on the defensive side of the ball because they're not getting their personnel situation straight. Play them on down the distance. Chris Saturday, ABC, a great lineup of Thanksgiving weekend college football at 1 o'clock Eastern time. Most of you are going to see Iowa take on Missouri. Then at Eastern, number 10, Miami, and number 21, Pittsburgh, and one of Chris's Heisman hopefuls and candidates, and Larry Fitzgerald, their brilliant wide receiver. Perhaps Notre Dame Stanford as well. Check your local listings for games and times in your area on ABC. Yes, standings presented by Allstate. There's Oklahoma, 12-0. Still the... Big 12 championship game to come. Southern California 10 and 1. And LSU right behind them. We talked about the implications of the game involving Alabama and Hawaii in the SEC. Yeah. Michigan number four after the big win against Real Milan. And LSU has a big matchup now. Arkansas is a team that can give them problems. Great games this weekend. Starting with a heated rivalry. It's heated all right, but we're cold outside. In Cincinnati, 36 degrees and falling, in addition to some snowflakes falling. Gates sheds one tackle, going his way forward to about the 35. He'll pick up one yard. Trying to chew up some clock. And keep the defense off the field up by 14 is Louisville. Dave, anytime Louisville is in a straight I formation or normal I backs, follow the fullback, he will take you to the ball. He'll show you whether it's an inside run or an outside run. That time the fullback came or went outside, the ball goes outside. That should be a key for Cincinnati. Russell and Clark are split to the left. Two of three wideouts in this formation of four. Shotgun. Hadler missed him in the fours again. The escapability puts his head down. Calicott and the fours come together. Stephon's not worried about the contact. He's worried about whether or not he got the first down. Looks like he's a little short. Needed to get to the 41-yard line. You can see our yellow line there indicating first down yardage needed. Another great effort by LaFours, who somehow got away from Hagler coming right at him. Yeah, Hagler has him in his sights here. It's a good job by Stefan of moving to his right, and I like this effort. Franklin takes a better angle this time than we showed last time, forcing him out before he gets to the first down. But great effort by Stefan of knowing where the sticks are and trying to get there. Brad Modi averaging just under 40 yards a punt, heading into final regular season game for Louisville. The left footer, Lewis. Waves off his teammates to make sure the ball does not strike anyone on the way down. And Cincinnati gets another crack at it. Under four and a half to go in our first half. It's been a very rough week. Turbulent, to say the least, for Bobby Petrino, the head coach of Louisville. Was he going to Auburn? Was he staying? We'll talk more about it next. Only. Not tell Tom Jurich, the AD of Louisville, anyone at that school they were meeting. It was discovered by Louisville area newspapers. The story was broken. Coach Petrino denied it, then retracted the denial and apologized to all. It has been crazy. Ball loose, picked up by Louisville. Brandon Johnson. He's in for a Cardinal touchdown. That'll make the coach feel better. We were just talking about how Carl Jones wasn't in the last two series. That time he gets an opportunity. He gets stood up at the line of scrimmage. Does not protect the football. Rod Day got him, and it's off to the races for Brandon Johnson. And great awareness for Brandon Johnson picking the ball up instead of falling on it and making a big play. 19-yard touchdown return. The fumble scooped up by Brandon Johnson. And the cards are indeed in business. A chance to go up 28-7 with just over four to go in the first half. Dagger in the heart of UC's chances. Needing some sort of momentum, even a good drive, Chris, at that point down 21-7 would have helped their cause for halftime, but now on the Johnson fumble return for six. It is a 21-point lead. This is a play they've had success with in the beginning of the football game. You see Carl Jones in there. Rod Day comes in and smacks him. Delivers a blow. The ball pops out. Brandon Johnson, I love guys that pick the ball up. 
Why not? You got a chance to make a play. You're a big time college athlete. You could bend down and pick a ball up and take it for the distance. Outstanding effort by Day. Outstanding effort by Brandon Johnson. And the momentum is certainly on the Cardinal side. 30th fumble, Chris, of the year for Cincinnati, the 18th time they've lost one. And that brought back to the house by Brandon Johnson, a sophomore from Birmingham. Speaking of Alabama Auburn, he's right in the middle of that growing up in that SEC city. Now, you know, just to get back to that, I think, you know, Coach Petrino is, is, has been contrite about his decision to meet with Auburn. And it's nice to be wanted. And I know that he regrets what he did, but in my eyes, you still, you got to have your credibility. And he knows better than to do that. He's learned a valuable lesson. I don't think he'll do anything like that again. It's tough. It was a tough thing to go through. You figure he'll learn a lot from the experience, Chris, and that probably will not happen in those circumstances again. Tom Jerk, the athletic director of Louisville, will be joined by Reese Davis in the studio. This all happened this week. He made his announcement apologizing on Wednesday. I want to apologize to Tom Jurich. Tom's been very good to me, um, hired me, been very loyal, and uh, I should have informed him about that right away. And secondly, I want to apologize to Tommy Tuberville. Tommy is a guy that uh, hired me at Auburn. This is where I'm going to stay, and uh, that's really all there is to it. His words, Chris, to begin that press conference. Yesterday I was lying. Today I'm telling the truth. If you're a Louisville fan, what do you think of that? Well, I, I think you got to believe him, man. And I, I think he got caught up in something that was out of his control. He's learned a valuable lesson. He's a young coach. It's not going to happen again. But the sad thing, Dave, is the fact that Auburn would actually do something like that. And that that's disappointing. That's the black mark on college football in my eyes, that the decision of the president. And, the, and that's one thing maybe Coach Petrino should have recognized. That, look, these guys aren't going to come up here and ask me about who I would recommend for a job. They're going to come up here and talk about, hey, do you want this job? And that's something where he should say, look, don't even come up here. I got my team to re get ready for. Coach Tuberville is a guy that's a friend of mine. Give him the respect. And he learned it, and, he, and he's sorry about it. And give him a second chance. He deserves it, absolutely. The duel is throwing on second down. Pass that is Lewis, who's pushed forward across the 30, eight-yard pickup. The Louisville paper is merciless. On Bobby Petrino calling him Pinocchio of all things. Yeah, well, so, I mean, they're rough. It was a firestorm to say the least. It's been, it's, it's been tough. And, and I, he's got to get some credibility back with the fans. And he'll do that. And, but he's got to get credibility with recruits because he's going to go into homes, Dave. And a parent has the right. If he was recruiting my son, coach, how do I know that you're going to be there? And he's got to be able to prove it again. And he will. First down for UC, little quarterback draw. Gino Gadulli, plenty of room. And some speed himself. Well, four is not the only quarterback in this game who can run. Big pickup inside the 40, down to the 35-yard line. 33-yard run, Gino Gadulli trying to give UC the much-needed momentum. Heading into the stretch run of this first Great half. job of blocking, and, and Gino Gadulli letting the hole open up, and Cedric Dolly getting his hands on Johnson to keep him out, and Gino protecting the football. Good awareness, but UC must get something on the board to make this a game because they don't get something out of the board off this drive it's going to be trouble big trouble josh mickens chris eventually tracked him down kerry rose missed the tackle on the line of scrimmage looking for thomas deflected right up in the air and becoming an offensive back for a moment was gadulin his quarterback on his own pass well, that's twice they tried to run that play and twice it's been a drop pass and two drop passes now gino threw the fastball in there when the catcher called for the changeup he threw the fastball which might have been a little strong for Thomas to handle, but good again, awareness of Gino playing a little basketball and DB going up and knocking it down. Outstanding play by him, but he's got to throw the change. He threw the fastball, the heater cake. Looked like Jonathan Jackerson got a piece of the ball before it reached Hannibal Thomas and then went up into the air. And Marcus Jones, the jump ball battle with Gino Gadula. Violet 13 in the air, 53 yards. There's Gino making his sixth catch. Completion to Hannibal Thomas. He's bumped out of bounds by Josh Minkins. We mentioned Thomas, a player who transferred as a junior college athlete for UC. Rick Minner wasn't sure how soon he could use him. Didn't have a catch, did Thomas, the first seven games of the season. Getting acclimated to a new offense, getting his conditioning to the Division I level.
But he's come along, been their top guy the last few games, had 173 yards in that loss to Memphis last week. And but making plays in practice, Dave, and, and Coach, Coach Minner said, I gotta have him in there. He earned his way in. Third two for Gino. Three wide outs to his left. Rolling left. Enzo Pattern falls incomplete. Looking there for Hannibal Thomas again, just shy of the goal line. Kerry Rhodes on coverage. Now, see, that's on Gino. He's open. He's got to deliver that football. They run a nice little pick route on the outside, freeing Hannibal Thomas, and he's open, and the ball's thrown up, but he's got to put that on target. That's six points. No choice here, Chris. UC's got to go for it. Fourth and two, two and a half to go in the first half. Down by three touchdowns, critical moment. Booker Van is the only running back behind Gadula. He'll get it. Up the middle he goes. Got the first down in there at the 20-yard line. Louisville expecting pass. Seven-yard pickup from Van. Rhodes made the tackle again. They had the blitz coming from the outside, which made the defense vulnerable inside. Cincinnati was able to get a hat on a hat and open a good hole for the former walk-on Booker Van, who's a senior, getting a chance to contribute in his last game at Nippert Stadium. He stays off. In the game behind Gadulli, who lines up over center. It's a rarity, and Van gets the carry one more time. Dancing his way in the secondary. Booker Van, nice carry. First down yardage plus he's inside the five of the four yard line where it'll be first goal for UC. 16 yard game. Yeah, this is where you're seeing that you see that Louisville's in their pass rush mode. Okay, they're trying to get upfield. Cincinnati's taking advantage of it and they're knocking them off the line of scrimmage. Nice cutback by Book Booker Van keeping his feet clear. Uh, he, he got a little stumble there. He keeps going and going and going. He said, I got a big hole. I got excited. Keep your feet. Nice play of the drive here, Chris. Under. Now Buck 40 remaining in this first half. The late handoff. Lunging for the end zone and getting there is Daniels. Mike Daniels, the freshman. Touchdown Cincinnati. The former Ohio star, one of the best high school running backs and quarterbacks in state history. And Mike's 5'7". Now what happened was nobody saw him coming. You couldn't find him. This is great effort by Mike Daniels. A good job of UC pushing again. Watch the effort of fighting. That's five seven wanting to get in the end zone. That's a great job of fighting and scrawling, crawling and scratching and snorting and tooting and doing what you got to do to get in. He found it. Awesome. Love effort from Princeton High School right here in Cincinnati. Mike Daniels at five seven, 185 pounds. Well, the game against South Florida, his first career touchdown. He's got another one here against. Let's check into the studio with Reese Davis. Hey, Trev Alberts and Mark May joining me. Coming up on the College Game Day Halftime Report, we'll tell you exactly how close Mississippi State is to naming Jackie Sherrill's replacement. You guys have talked about the Bobby Petrino-Auburn situation. The Louisville AD, Tom Juritz, will join us to respond. And run, Ralphie, run. Uh, maybe they'll run. Hey, this could be a bad omen for Colorado against Nebraska, Mark. Trev, have you have any any experience with Ralphie the Buffalo? I hate to go with the animals with you, but no. But you, he's seen it's grass. <laughs> they like grass. He wants to eat. I don't know. He might have been able to drag the team out of the locker room or something. All right, guys, we can't wait for yeah. halftime report. Always fun to talk about the CU Buffs and hey, Ralphie. I I just talked about effort right there. Right. Ralphie has no effort. <laughs> That's, that's poor effort, Ralphie. It's, it's not a trophy game. Maybe he has to play this Cagadales game. Oh, you get a new Ralphie. If he's not going to play hard, you find a new Ralphie. <laughs> that's your theme today, Chris. No doubt about it. That's football, man. Right. You especially play in hard. your state, especially in Ohio, right? right. Yep. Blue collar, tough football. Great job by Cincinnati, Dave, to take advantage of an opportunity in this football game. Big play on the drive, the fourth and two conversion. Booker Van. For Dean will kick off. Clark, the deep man. Instead comes to the near side and Glenn. Victor Glenn. First time he's handled the ball today outside the 30 to about the 33. 11 yard return for Victor. Also a wide out for Louisville. We're coming here from Nippert Stadium. It is chilly. Flurries are a flying here Thanksgiving weekend. Dave Ryan, Chris Beal, and our entire crew. So glad to join us today. Hope you're having a safe and happy holiday weekend. Full from the turkey and ready for more football today. Total yards are very close. 
Reason a two touchdown lead really has been Stefan LaFour for Louisville. Yeah, he's standing in two schools of thought here. You can run the clock out or you have plenty of time, in my opinion, to go make a play. Shotgun again for LaFour. Dropping back in coverage on the linebackers. It's Gates. Big pickup. Lionel Gates. Jamar Enzor got there. There's a spitz right here. He's going to tackle Tyrone Hagler. See that? Well, he got him from arm twist in there. That sprung Gates down the sidelines. That's a good job of, of, of the guard getting out, getting a block, getting it done. Got away with one, too. Push a guy from behind, tackle him. Timeouts left two for Louisville. We're thinking about a last second drive here. We spoke with Lionel Gates this week and told us he really loves catching passes. Doing that as long as he can remember. Start incomplete pass there on the far side looking for Russell with a minute eight to go in this first half. Eric Shelton is out as we mentioned. The son love good pressure there a moment ago on the floors. Shelton injured in the TCU game on the head to head neck injury. He should be back for the bowl game whenever and wherever that is for Louisville. But Gates offers the receiving aspect a bit more versatile in the backfield. He can do some things that, and again anytime you can you can involve more people or more positions in your pass game. It puts a lot of pressure on defenses because they can't take anybody and help in certain areas. Second attempt. The four start of that going deep. Now he's running for his life again. No one can catch this guy. Now he throws. Broken up looking for Clark incomplete at the 18-yard line. Cincinnati. Monahan came over on coverage. A strong safety. The junior from Cincinnati called by Rick Minner is steady Eddie back there. Very solid leader of the defensive backfield. Yeah, it's a great job of LaFleur escaping pressure. And what's happening is they're taking poor angles. Tackling is about angles. Right here, it makes him miss, and there's a bad angle by Adam Hall coming up. Adam Roberts coming. Now he took a shot there. That was a good angle, but you have a chance to get a sack or make a play. You have to make it to make something happen. Take good angles toward the ball carrier. Did he ever get belted at the end of that play? Oh, he's got this uh, round up tennis oh, shoes. <laughs> tires on his helmet now. Used Time to be out. dirt, now it's tires. I'm out for Louisville here. They got one left here in the first half, under a minute to go. Mm -hmm. And Bobby Petrino not pleased that his quarterback had to use the play stoppage at all. Talk with the players. We visited with Stefan LaFours and mentioned Lionel Gates. Comparing John L. Smith now at Michigan State has done an incredible job there at East Lansing and Petrino. Consensus seems to be, Chris, that Smith was more of a player's coach. Petrino much more intense and really different approaches offensively as well. Yeah, you think you know, what I always wondered as a coach, Dave, or, or from a coach, is that he was consistent. You know, if you're going to be a, a intense, hard guy and, and kind of standoffish or not as Lacks as maybe a John L. Smith, then be it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you're going to be a players coach, happy go lucky, back slapper, then be that 24 hours a day, just so the players know where the coach stands. There's no confusion on what is expected from each player. Bobby Petrino grew up in Montana, in Helena. His dad, Bob, is in the National Coaches Hall of Fame. Bobby's brother, Paul Younger, is the offensive coordinator at Louisville. Oh, Bobby really does most of the play calling. Paul, more of the organizational role as the offensive coordinator. Gives him strong suggestions, too. That's right. And Dad Bob pretty intense, too, Paul tells us. That's where Bobby and Paul both get it from. From his own 40, over the middle, he's got Jen. And a big tight end. Is to the 40-yard line of Cincinnati. Monahan brought him down 14-yard pickup. Another Louisville first down. Hurry up here. Under 50 seconds to go in the half. Monahan was laid on the coverage here, playing his spy technique with the safety down in the middle of the field. He's got to come in, read the crossing route, and jump it. He had two guys over top. He could have jumped that route. Goes far side. Completes that to teams. Joshua's first catch of the game. He's inside the 35-yard line, about the 34 of UC. And last time out exercise by Louisville, Davin Holly brought him down after the six-yard pickup. He's still hot over there, coach. <laughs> but Petrino's talking about how much time they lost. Perhaps the officials, he wants at least five seconds if you're reading lips put on the clock. 
I was letting them know about it. Now, you know, you make your point to the official. Now you want to get your plays called. Make sure you have plenty of time to talk to your offense. Again, he is the main play caller for Louisville. His brother Paul's in the booth, and I asked him about that. He said, you know, we're on the same page. We think alike. He sees what I want them to see, then I'll make the decision, which I, I don't mind the head coach doing that. There's more than ways than one to get that done. He's the head coach. He's responsible. He knows what he wants. And, and to have eyes like his brother Paul in the press box certainly helps him make the decision he wants to make. Force 84 yards, 9 of 12. Uh, there's brother Paul right there. I said, I asked Paul, hey, you, you want a shot at the title with your big brother? <laughs> he said, I took a shot when I was about 12, but I didn't win it. But I might be coming back for it. I, I'm talking about a fight, you know, the big exactly. brother fight. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's a big brother fight there you're yeah. referring to. Both, yes. both brothers say it's been a great experience to coach with one another. Because Bobby was old, left the house by the time Paul was about 11 or 12 years old. He was off to college and beginning his coaching career. First head coaching stint at Louisville. It's been a rocky week. Team goes for its ninth win in his debut season. The four is trying to help him get there. Nick D. Footwork against the final four. Force gets five. And he wants a favorable spot for a first down. Does not look like he'll get it from the official on that far sideline. Uh, they, UC can't tackle the fours, but they can tackle the guy over there on the sidelines. I, they took a, a guy out with a Louisville coat on. or <laughs> tackling somebody with Louisville, but what's happened is if they, they did a zone blitz. You've got to keep contained. You can let him break contain. That means get outside and not flank because there's nobody there to come up for secondary contain or secondary run support. No timeouts, 23 seconds. Did get out of bounds. It's third and short, about half a yard. Shot cut again, LaForce, dancing away from trouble. Penalty flag now, he's gonna get belted there. Almost accepted, and it falls incomplete. Hit from Roberts. Feaster almost grabbed it out of midair, but it falls to the turf. It's a great effort by Adam Roberts. Hold the call against Louisville anyway. And take the penalty, get him out of there. But it's a great effort by Adam Roberts of not quitting on the play and finishing. He came with a rip move, and he keeps running. He almost falls down. He's getting held. Does a good job of finishing the play. Nice hit, too. Holding. Offense. 10-yard penalty. Replay. Third down. Yeah, Adam Roberts is coming, will be coming into your pitcher off the corner here. There's the hold right there inside. Now Adam Roberts coming all the way from the back side. He'll pop in your pitcher. Yeah, close the gate for the ball. He got his helmet under the arm. Lucky LaFleur didn't get an elbow. Finally got a good shot. Stephon LaFleur hasn't had much today for Cincinnati's defense. Roll out play left LaFleur. Throws it deep. Looking for Russell. Ball short. Contact in the backfield with Holly. Flags are down. Each say the other side is the guilty party. J.R. Russell was the intended receiver. Holly deep on coverage. Davin Holly does a great job of what I like to call look and lean. That's on the offense. That's on Russell. But he's in control of his body, Dave, and he's allowed to bump receivers. If guys were taught this, they can use their body. Their rear end is their friend. And Russell's other jibber jabber. Play football. Well, Holly did a good job of looking and leaning, using his rear end as a defender to be able to bump and knock off Russell. Right there, see, he's looking and he's leaning into the receiver. Excellent coverage by a corner. Now, I like the play by Russell now, too. I like the play by Russell uh, of becoming a defender, but a great job by Holly using great technique, what I like to call look and lean. Look for the ball and lean into the receiver. Now fourth down, I don't know why they, they got a shot at the Hail Mary. You should have took the penalty, backed him up to make it more difficult. The floor certainly has the arm to get the ball to the end zone. And the legs, as we've seen, his long touchdown gallop. Should be the final play of the half. Throw up for grabs and traffic and intercepted. Zach Norton brings it down at the five-yard line. And that will do it. Last play of the first half. LaFour is very impressive. 28-14 game of the half. Let's go to the studio now. Reese, Trev, and Mark. All on the bizarre scale of coaching changes. That was until last week when Louisville head coach Bobby Petrino had a clandestine night meeting with boosters and officials from Auburn University. Word eventually spread. Petrino initially denied that he'd ever met with Auburn officials, but was later forced to come clean when it was found that they did indeed have that meeting.
I want to apologize to Tom Jurich. Tom's been very good to me, um, hired me, and very loyal, and uh, I should have informed him about that right away. And secondly, I want to apologize to Tommy Tuberville. Tommy is a guy that uh, hired me at Auburn. When I left Auburn, I told the people there that uh, coaching for Tommy Tuberville for a year, that I'm a better coach, a better person, and a better father in doing that. And I truly believe that I am. And that, uh, you know, to, to uh, talk to people when the, when the job wasn't open is, is not right, and, that, and I'm wrong in doing that. Tom Jurich is the best athletic director in the country. He was, gave me a great opportunity here at the University of Louisville, and I'm uh, very appreciative of that. This is the job I want. This is where I'm going to stay, and uh, that's really all there is to it. And joining us now is Louisville Athletic Director Tom Jurich. Tom, we heard Bobby Petrini issue his apology. When it became apparent to you that he hadn't been forthright in what had happened with Auburn, did you consider firing him? No, never at any point. Why not? Well, I think Bobby got in a bad situation. First of all, he had a lot of emotional ties to Auburn. This is the people he worked with before. I think basically he got into a situation that got a lot bigger than him very quickly. And uh, he, he, he was somebody that's very remorseful. He came to me, and uh, he's, he explained the entire situation to me Tuesday night, and I think we've worked through it. Is there any hesitancy on your part about your ability to trust him in the future, whether it be on matters uh, dealing with NCAA compliance all the way to potential future job opportunities? No, Bobby's been a guy that I've known for 15 years, and I, and I trust him immensely. He, he was in a very unique situation. I don't believe this would have ever happened if it was any other institution other than Auburn. Uh, we've had other schools in that conference that have called this year already seeking to, to Bobby, and really with headhunters, and, uh, and Bobby had reported those to me immediately. He, in fact, he told me about the Auburn thing two weeks ago. The only thing he didn't tell me is that the president was going to be involved in flying into Louisville last Thursday. Is that where, in your mind, Auburn breached this line of so-called etiquette, I guess? We always hear about the unofficial contract prior to the official permission to speak for a job. Is that where Auburn crossed the line? Well, I think they crossed a lot of lines, but, you know, number one, I, I'm tired of people hiding behind these search firms because they think by hiring a search firm, they have all this confidentiality, and I think what they do then is they think they have a license to go steal. You know, I would like to see it where people call you, they talk to you, they're straight up, and I've never told a coach they can't anybody I always make them available because I don't want a coach here that doesn't want to be here this is the second year in a row Tom that your school has been placed in an awkward situation John L Smith leaving for Michigan State a year ago this situation with Bobby Petrino and Auburn now what needs to change you want people to be up front is this something the coaches association can change or is it something that can change on a different level well, I think, you know, number one, we hear from Miles Brand, who I, who I salute for trying to put a lot of morals and ethics and values into, into the NCAA. But when, when you have a president that's acting this way and coming after your people behind your back onto your campus, I think there's no excuse for that. Uh, I, you know, in John L's situation, he, he gave us five great years, and John L. Smith put this program on the map. There's no doubt about it. So I had no qualms with him going to Michigan State. It was a wonderful job. They called us prior to him taking the job, so I, I didn't have any problem with that. If Auburn hadn't gotten caught pursuing your football coach, do you believe you'd be looking for a new head coach after the game today? That's very possible. You know, I certainly don't know that. Bobby had told me that no offer was made, that they were looking at other people around the country, but I have a hard time imagining they just came up here to talk about the passing game. <laughs> yeah, it would seem a little bit remote. Um, as you look at this situation now, Tom, we've seen the public apologies that have been issued in a formal fashion from Auburn. Have you spoken to anyone from Auburn? Yes, I did. I, I spoke with uh, Tommy Tuberville yesterday morning. He called me and apologized on behalf of Auburn, which I thought was, was quite uh, unique. Uh, Tommy Tuberville's a class act, and as I said before to, in our press conference, uh, they're damn lucky to have Tommy Tuberville at Auburn. That's a fine institution with a fine football coach, and for him to call and apologize on their behalf, I told him first right up, you do not need to do that to me. Uh, you, you're a wonderful human being and done a great job and, and certainly been a great mentor to Bobby, and I appreciate it. Tom, appreciate your time. Best of luck to you. Thank you, Reese. So Tom Jurich pointed in his comments and his criticism of Auburn, and, and you as well believe that Auburn breached the...
proper protocol of pursuing a football coach. As we like to say here at ESPN, that's why you're Auburn. I mean, what an embarrassing situation for Auburn. And I really believe when you look at this situation, Walker, the president, Housel, athletic director, I think they need to be fired. I mean, if you think about it, as representatives of a university where your mission is to take young men and young women and teach them about morals and ethics and values, they failed miserably here. And I ask the simple question this, what if a student at that university gets accused of cheating, gets accused of something, and they say, I didn't do it, or they try to cover it up? How then can a president of a university who's taken this action behind the back of his football coach honestly stand there and defend or, or, or accuse that student. I think that's the whole story. This is an embarrassing situation, and I think they need to be let go. Then when you talk about morals, you have to go to Bobby Petrino. Yeah. I mean, who's his mentor? Coach uh, Franchoni? You know, you're in a situation here where, you know, you've got the loyalty of Louisville behind your back. You're an assistant coach here. You've got the athletic director behind you. This is your first head job. Your loyalty should be to Louisville and Louisville alone. I don't understand what coaches are doing today. They sign a contract for five years. All of a sudden, somebody chirps in their ear and they want to split and go someplace else. I don't think it's right. I think it's time for coaches to stand up and honor their contracts, not only to the school, but to those scholar athletes that they're signing to be there for four years to play for them. You know, I don't have a problem with coaches moving up, but you, you have to be more forthright than this yes. situation was. I don't think there's any question about that. And the other situation at Auburn right now is whether the people in power by name are actually making the decisions or whether they're doing the bidding of boosters. Who are and that, that's, that's, that. the other, that's the other situation that made this an ugly incident and an embarrassing one for everybody involved. But Petrino's been able to get his team to roll out there. Chris Dave Ryan with you. Happy Thanksgiving great weekend. Good first half for Stephon LaForce. Maybe even great. Had 164 wow. yards in total offense, a touchdown run of 69 yards, a touchdown pass, a two-point conversion. What more can he do? Well, it's a well-called football game, too, by Bobby Petrino, head coach, offensive coordinator. He's keeping Cincinnati off balance. But a big point for Cincinnati was a score toward the end of the second quarter to make this a football game. It was huge that they got points on the board, and they did. Fourth and two, a big play at the end of that first half, converted that and eventually marched in for a touchdown to make this a 14-point game at the half. And Cincinnati now gets the ball again to, to establish some momentum and, and to make something happen off their last scoring drive. Uh, Daniels, a freshman, able to march in for a rushing touchdown at the end of that first half. Daniels, the deep man. Aforementioned Mike Daniels, a true freshman with an earth. He's got some great speed. Shot out of bounds by Nate Smith, the kicker, at the 47-yard line of Cincinnati. Well, Mike Daniels is making something happen again, an opportunity to make a play. He's taking advantage of it. It's a great job of set and return. Set it to the middle, then break it to the outside. Good job of Cincinnati blocking upfield, staying on position. Now they got to make something happen. We'll Mike Daniels wants to make something happen. That's I'm right. I'm from here. Give not, me the ball. Not just the touchdown run at the end of the half. 42-yard return to begin the second half. He was third in the voting for Mr. Ohio football as a senior. 2,564 yards passing, 1,387 yards, and 24 touchdowns running for Daniels as a senior in high school. Booker Man brings in a pass from Gadouli. On their first play from scrimmage in the second half. 17-yard game there. Yes, gets exclusive. KFC game track. Stephon LaForce, as we mentioned, nearly unstoppable in that first half. A fumble late from Jones and a big pickup and play from Brandon Johnson. Rambling 19 yards for a touchdown. And is Rick Minner on the hot seat? Reports and rumors are swirling here on the UC campus that this could be his last game in his 10th season as head coach. Van just caught the pass, now he's running on the first down play. Good Booker yardage into the Louisville secondary, give him six. Well, Booker Van is going to be a part of this offense. When he had an opportunity to play in the first half, he did well. Gino Goduli saw the matchup previous play one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker. Booker Van beat him. Now you get him in a running game and get some type of rhythm. But again, Cincinnati started the, first, the game strong. Now they're starting the third quarter strong. They need points. They're down here in the red area. You cannot come away with zero points when you're down 14. Kyle Kester capped off that first drive of the game for the touchdown. A little play action. Gadouli forced out of the pocket. A lot of room. Going to run with it. First down yardage and plenty more. Inside the 20 down of the 18-yard line of Louisville. It's good recognition by Gino Gadulli. Louisville's playing man-to-man -man in the back end. And any time you play man-to-man -man in the back end, if the quarterback back, back breaks, 
the first part of the pass rush, all the defenders' backs turn, he has free run. Great awareness by Gino Gadulli. He can run the football now. Very athletic. 66 yards today. Career high 71 yards came early in the season in that dramatic win over Temple. Impressive start to their second half. It's Van again trying the left side. Not much doing this time. Montavious Stanley among several Louisville tacklers who brought Booker down. Pick up of one. Yeah, I thought Booker right there, David, missed the cutback lane. They had a little hole cutting back, and Booker's shoulders were pointing toward the sideline, so he had no interest in cutting back. That's the lack of not playing a lot. Remember now, he's not, he didn't even start the game. Carl Jones started the game, had some success. Booker, a former walk-on, playing in his last game at UC, get an opportunity to do something. Transfer from Kent State, where in two years, 99 and 2000, he had 608 yards, mostly used in short yard situations. After a short pickup, second and nine. Pass brought in by Thomas. Hannibal Thomas picks up a few toward the 15-yard line. Bumped down by Josh Minkins. He gets three. And Carl Jones was a player in the first half. He was able to run the football, make things happen. Sneaking it up in there, showed great vision and burst, using the referee as a blocker, saying, get out of that referee didn't blow, uh, wrap up. Right there. And he gets hurt right here. Bam, he gets fumbled the football, and you're not going to play for Rick Minner very long. Yeah, he hasn't been back in the game since he's fumbled. Bearcats 1 of 5, Chris so far. Third down conversions. Big one here to begin the second half. Got a man-to-man -man defense, a pre-snap read. A lot of times you'll throw the fade. Showing blitz, corner blitz coming. Gadouli reads it. Runs with it. Had to get inside the eight for the first down. He stopped well shy of that planet. Johnson wrestling down from behind. Pickup of one for Gino. And decision time here for Rick Minner to begin the third quarter. He wants to keep the momentum going, and he'll try for the three. Yeah, what you do now, you got Brandon Johnson playing a spy technique because Gino hurt him on, on this quarterback draw. Brandon's not rushing. He's just kind of sitting and waiting, spying him up, and does a good job of running him down. He has a long wingspan and just gathers him in and throws him. 29-yard field goal attempt. This year, Manfredini with a long of 41 is 5 of 6. And the Jet tried that long field goal earlier that missed Jet Urban, rather. Field goal put through by Manfredini. Three more for Rick Minner's team. Still down 11 to Louisville. Conference USA action. Yes, your love. Cincinnati fans, your type of fans. Yeah. <laughs> Get rid of those blankets and be even tougher. <laughs> I was just going to say that. <laughs> yeah, the Bearcats down by 11. Impressive drive to begin the second half. Manfredini caps it off with a 29 yard field goal. It's about 35 degrees and windy. Snow flurries mercifully have tapered off for now. Manfredini to kick off. Roderick Clark is the deep man, but we get close to him. That'll be out of bounds in a 35-yard line drive start. For Louisville, can you see stop step on the force? Chris is the question. Well, you know, the thing that he's shown to is the ability to run the football. He's a double threat. He can throw the football. And the bootleg right here, he finds Owens, the tight end, on awareness of the field. He's been a, yeah, a two-point conversion, finding the hole, being aware of the offense, understanding it, and making things happen, showing great leadership and toughness. All the things you want in your quarterback. Nice numbers for the Forge. Season high, 69-yard run for the touchdown earlier in this game today. We'll see if the procedure call Field position hurt Cincinnati, hurting them right now is a big run from Gates. Into Bearcat territory, the 44-yard line give Lionel 21 yards, finally wrestled out of the turf by Norton. And back toward the line of scrimmage, there's an injured Louisville offensive lineman. It's Lafew. Travis, the 6'4", 289-pound sophomore. Yeah, he looks in a lot of pain and a, and a good job of blocking by Louisville up front. Enzor, the middle linebacker, got stuck on a block. He was one on one. They ran right at him. You see Travis, and that'll be a big blow to them if they lose Travis. He's a good football player for them. Probably one of their top offensive linemen, even though he's only a sophomore. His brother Bobby, the junior, plays on the defensive side of the ball. Two from Danville. Kentucky. 
And you're going to see him right, uh, right up top, right here. See what happens. Oh man, right From on the behind. ankle. Yep. Yeah, that happens a lot to offensive linemen. Then he gets bent back, and, and that's tough duty. And, and uh, that's where most of the injuries to offensive linemen come. You see those knee braces on. I'm glad he has that because I guarantee it's an ankle, not a knee. Because of those knee braces, those oftentimes protect the knee from going, but the ankles don't get a lot of protection. You get those little braces in there, but when you get about 370 pounds of total, about 600 pounds on your ankle, it's not going to hold up. Goodness, Lobo is off on his own power. That's the long run by Lionel Gates. First and 10. Play action again. LaForce has Jent. The big tight end brings another catch in. Roddy Jent, the senior, who's ninth all time in Louisville history in catches. Picks up 18 more Cardinal yards. Bumped out of bounds by Doug Monahan, the safety. Actually, Cincinnati has the right defense on for this. They have Franklin Calica coming off the corner. But again, he's trying to chase the ball carrier down from behind. If he goes up the field and plays LaFleur's, he has a sack. But he got nosy, chased the ball carrier from behind. LaFleur's just rolls around him, has all kind of time to find Jen on the crossing route. Four catches, 44 yards for Ronnie Jen. The star tight end of Louisville. The late handoff, it's Geeks. Jamar Enzor brings him down after a game of two. Saturday, SPN, a full day of college football coming your way. First at noon, Eastern Toledo meets Josh Harris and Bowling Green with a Mac West title. Hanging in the balance, Reese Davis told you about in the studio during our halftime report. 7.45 Eastern Alabama takes on Hawaii, a big game in the SEC and the BCS race. And Maryland Wake Forest, 3.30 Eastern time in the ACC. Gator Bowl bound are the Terps and Ralph region. Here's an 11-point Louisville lead. Field goal to begin this second half from Cincinnati. Option play. Look out and hit. Smith is knocked out. Ball loose. Bearcats have it. Zach Norton absolutely crushed Colby Smith. The second turnover of the game for Louisville. And UC creating some momentum with the defense. Yeah, now Zach's back on the good list. And that's that's old keg of nails hit right there. Why? Because he put his face. He closed the game in front of the ball. Brought it. Thank you for playing football, Zach. No push out there. He, oh, beautiful form tackle. Tried to wrap him up, but the ball carry went down before he could get his arms around him. They needed that turnover. Boy, that was a great shot by Zach Norton. Now he's feeling it, but that's how you play. Outstanding. He made up for that push out. He came up and whacked him. That, folks, is big time college football contact right there. Mm, man, with that noise. When you hear noise up in the press box, big hit. Major confrontation. Can the Bearcats take advantage is the question. Booker Van, who's seen the majority of the carries here since Jones has had his fumble issues. Four yard pickup there. Rod Day brought him down, fourth tackle the game for him. Zach, now Zach's playing now. And, and I got on about that one hit, but right there, that, that makes up for everything. As he caused a turnover. Five ball at the 20 yard line. It'll be second down and great hit. Man, I love those. Slobber knockers. <laughs> I get your blood flowing, huh, Chris? Yep. Well, college football's all right. Second and five after the five yard pickup from Van. That pass incomplete, looking on that far side. Dave broke it up. Look at this one more time, Dave. You want to see a guy that sees what he gets, brings his feet, one step and grab, two steps and squeeze, tried to squeeze him. But the, but the running back went down so quick, he didn't have a chance to wrap his arm, created a fumble, put the helmet on the football. Now, Gino's late throwing the football. That last one, he had the receiver open in the flat. He's late making the decision. He's got to get rid of the ball. Scooped up by Jason Russell. On the turnover, now third and five. Wicks. Under nine and a half, throws a third quarter clock. Gino checks off again. Stays in the shotgun. Big play early. Pressure from Johnson gets it to Booker Man, complete to the 30. He needed the 32 for a first down. It looks like he's got it. LaFue pushed him out. A nice job of Gino avoiding pressure, making a tough throw. Even though it's a screen pass, it's still a tough throw. It's like a fadeaway shot. He's running to his left. Booker Van getting the first down. Good call versus the blitz. They saw the blitz coming. He looked to his coach. The coach checked the blitz. Gino checks the blitz. First down. Result. From 
from the 33 of UC. Trying to keep the momentum going off the turnover on the field goal to begin the half. Booker Van nestled down by Kerry Rhodes, picks up three more on that right side. As he crosses the 35 yard line, Tavius Stanley and Rhodes involved in the tackle. And we talked about Louisville using a lot of different formations. Rusty Byrne, the offensive coordinator. Now, look, he has a few in his bag of tricks now. They go under the center, two tights. Now they're in what they call 20 personnel. Two backs, zero tight ends, three wides. One of those is George Murray, seven in the red jersey, top of your screen. He is the backup quarterback behind Jennifer Murray and was listed as the top deep threat to begin the season for Cincinnati, but has not had a good year catching the ball. As penalty flag stopped that play before it could develop. Ball start. Offense. Five yards. The reason for the penalty, Dave, they show blitz. And every sometimes when an offensive lineman sees blitz, you gotta we used to give a call, I remember our quarterback said, hold your water, hold your water. That's a hang in there for the cadence. They want to get out of there and make sure they get to their proper guy. When they show blitz, you gotta be patient, trust your technique, hang in there. They got him backpedaling. And Louis Louisville's number. shown a lot of blitz this game now. They'll play a lot of man out there. Plenty of pressure on Gina Gadouli. You saw the penalty numbers a moment ago now. The last miscue creates a second and 12. Showing blitz, they don't come. Gadouli's first choice. Try to hit Ross. Instead of going deep for Daniels, incomplete. Now the 25 yard line, Brent Johnson deep on coverage for the Cardinals. There's the inexperience of Mike Daniels right there. He ran right Brent into a safety Johnson. on a cover two on the post. He's got to turn that into a seven cut, which is called a corner route. That's where Gino throws it. Now you see Mike right here. He's going to take his route right to the safety. All he's got to do is run the corner or the flag away from the safety. He ran it right into the safety, right into coverage where you saw Gino threw it to his outside. Mike was running his route inside. If you can believe it, in his high school career, Mike Daniels, 6,019 yards passing, almost 4,500 yards on the ground. He was a quarterback in high school, now a receiver, working with Gino Gadouli at the college level, making his adjustments. Gadouli completes that one near side for Ross. There are plenty of room, makes a move. Deep inside Louisville territory to the 29-yard line of the Cardinals. Rod Day knocked him down, 40-yard pickup to Derek Ross, the sophomore. It's a good job of Gino Gadulli avoiding a rush. Ross does a good job of finding the weakness between the cover two. Wilkins is biting up on the flat route. Watch Wilkins, see, he's, he's playing cover two. He jumps up. The safety has no time to get over to where Ross is, and Gino delivers a strike on the run. The corner has got to stay, play a little bit softer. He had a man underneath. You play from deep to short, not short to deep in that particular coverage. Check out the total yards, folks. Bottom of your screen, dead even, 295 apiece. Gadouli trying to give his team the advantage again. He's got the freshman Poland. And Bill, the true freshman, brings it in inside the 20-yard line. 7-yard pickup. And another first down for the Bearcats. That's a great job of Poland going up and getting the football and using his hands, knowing he's going to get KO'd. Took the shot, held on to the football. Good play. 13th catch of the year from right here in Cincinnati. Another one of the high school stars who yeah. stayed home. Nobody's covering down now. Here he comes. He's coming late. There, George Murray wide open. Eighth player, a very effective drive so far. Man bouncing off tacklers as he tried the left side. Picks up three. As he gets to the 15 of Louisville. Set up second down and set. A better job of patience by Booker Van. Remember, just recently I talked about. Wasn't patient enough for the cutback that time. He kept his shoulders square, which allowed him to cut back to his right after starting to the left. Booker from Middletown, Ohio. Mentioned the two-year stint at Kent State. So he's very glad he came back closer to family and friends. You can see him play, and he hopes, going to bowl games. Gotta take a miracle to get to the postseason. They've got to win this game today to become six and six. Play action, fake handoff. Goes to Daniels, incomplete. Josh Minkins helped knock it aside and make sure Mike Daniels, another true freshman, could not bring it in. Talked about the TCU Horned Frogs, what a great year they've had, but they were beaten by Southern Miss in the big ESPN national telecast game from Hattiesburg. So Southern Miss set no in conference play. They still have to play East Carolina tomorrow. 
five teams from the league automatically will go to bowl games. And Southfield is not included. They do not have enough. Division 1A wins this year to qualify. TCU already turned down a bowl, according to reports. That's right. GMAC in Mobile, Alabama. Drop by Murray. Did he have it long enough is the question. Louisville thinks so. It's rolled incomplete by the back judge. And it will set up another play. Fourth down coming up for Cincinnati. Good break as Murray had it for a moment then lost. And yeah, they run a quick slant here off the blitz. You know, does a good job. George, see, that's a catch to me. That's a fumble. Antoine Harris has been impressive today. Has a good break on the football. Ah, it might be a drop. Good break on the football. Too good of a break. Frustration. That's been like that all year for Gina. Short range kicker has been Chris Manfredini, the freshman. All year. 32 yard attempt for him. Looking for a second field goal of the second half. And yeah, Drew, Drew it in there. With the draw on there. Good shot. Right down the left side of the fairway. There you go. <laughs> He'll take it gladly, as will Coach Rick Minner. It's an eight point game. Of the Heisman Trophy. Look at that, baby! That was awesome! Let's keep moving! That, that's the keg of nails. Right, see? Keg, keg of beer right here. Keg of nails right there. That's outstanding. <laughs> that's formal. That's like an Easter bonnet. I think that keeps you warm, yeah. too, doesn't it? Yeah. It goes around the ears, and they say all the heat escapes right in your hands. Like superhero. <laughs> Pickskin man. Pickskin man. Manfredini is set to kick for the ball, will not cooperate off the tee by the Bruins. It's happened a few times today. Clark is the deep man. There it goes again. Someone's got to hold that ball. And just for those of you who don't know, usually the guy that's responsible, they have a safety on a kickoff coverage. He's usually the guy that will come in and secure the football. Now he's, got, he's got to get a better kickoff, though. He kicked it out of bounds, provided excellent field position for Louisville, and I saw the frustration of Coach Minner. Kick the ball off. Bearcats dodged that bullet on the great play by Norton. Russell recovering the fumble. And they did cash in for another field goal. Second of this second half to make it an eight-point game. UC not going anywhere. Clark, the deep man, a short kick at his 18-yard line. Full head of steam behind him. Big block. Springing in for a few yards as he's out to about the 30-yard line of the Cards. Jermaine Wilson attack after a 12-yard return for Broderick Clark. Let's go back to the studio and restate. All right, Dave, Nebraska special teams already set up one touchdown with a long kickoff return. Now attempting a field goal. Oh, Kellen Houston on the fake. And Kellen Houston will punch out first down for the Cornhuskers. And that would set up Corey Ross in a 14-10 game. 21-10. Had to go on his uh, weekly radio show and, de and defend his coach, Frank Solich. A lot of talk out there. Lots of talk. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, you, you threw, I mean, throw in Walt Harris. There's a connection between Steve Peterson and Walt Harris. So. Former AD at Pitt, that's right. Yeah. All right. Nebraska now. Frank Solich, salary over a million a year, a contract that runs in the 2005 season. Last 27 games, and Nebraska coach is 15 and 12. So maybe some reason. We'll see. Bush again, the ball carrier. He's across the 43 to the 44. First down yardage. Picks up five. And the UC defense cannot let Louisville have a methodical drive down the field. Louisville's been able to run past, and anytime they have that inside run, LaFleur is so good at his ball handling that his play action pass. Creates a lot of problems for the defense. Cincinnati did not have an answer for Stephon LaFour's in the first half. Can they create one in the second half is the question. Not a ball fake. It goes to Bush this time, who carries tacklers toward the midfield strike. Give him six more. Now you can see with this sort of sledgehammer mentality with Michael Bush had the 137 yards against Houston last week and that obliteration of the Cougars where they put up 779 yards they averaged 8.6 yards a carry 
in that Conference USA game. He's piled up 41 on nine carries today. Uh, Cincinnati's defense is not overly big, so what you want to do is you want to start angling, have those guys hitting the gaps. They can't match up and, and, and get in a pushing match with the guys up front for Louisville. Push is out for now. Joshua Titch in motion. Gates back in as the tailback behind the fours, who operates right over the center. J.R. Russell's got the reception, lost the ball. But after he was down at about the 40-yard line of Cincinnati, Jamie Murphy knocked him down. Second tackle of the game for him. Pickup of nine for the Cards. Regardless of the play, I'll tell you, LeFew, the guy who went out with the ankle injury, does a great job of hustling down the field. He recovered that fumble if it was a fumble. A lot of times you'd love to see your offensive lineman hustle down the field to clean up piles. That means pick guys off. Another different formation for Louisville. Their complex NFL-style offense brought in by Bobby Petrino. Gates will carry, tries the left side. Gasson Love, the senior from Paris, California. First of many UC tacklers to get their pickup of three. He yeah, told us the experience in Jacksonville was really valuable for him. Well, it is. And, and to, to be able to, to work with that type of athlete and be able to run all these different offenses, and plus his genetics. I mean, he's a football family guy. Bobby knows offense and understands the game. And to, to be able to install this type of offense to these college kids has been a, certainly a plus for Louisville in their program. Second stint for Bobby Petrino at Louisville. He was the offensive coordinator 98 and then racked up some big yards. Looking for more yards. Here's Russell. It looked like a deflected ball that he brings in at the 22 yard line. Another first down for the Cards. Okay. 15 yard gain. Yeah, it's all set up, Dave. Uh, the deflection was good. But it, by them running the football inside, they can run bootlegs. There's Coach Petrino's resume. Nevada offense, quarter 94, where they lit the sky up, throwing the football, Utah State. Louisville, we had Chris Met Redmond, uh, who set all kind of records, and obviously the coordinator of Jacksonville. So does a great job of coaching. Outstanding offensive mind, young offensive mind. Tied with Tom King, best first year effort in Louisville history. They win, going for nine wide of Mez Haskins. As he dies, nearly brings it in with one hand. It falls incomplete. No one near Robert Haskins in the end zone. LaForce wishes he had that one back. Well, Monahan and Norton are talking to each other because somebody screwed up. They had a safety in the corner cover the same guy, which left the post wide open. See the post right there? And all, all this LaForce has to do is lay it out there. That's the first bad throw that he's made today. Great effort going after the football. But there was a mix-up in the coverage between Monahan and Norton. You could tell by two guys looking at each other holding their hands up. That's your guy. No, that's your guy. Last kid's a sophomore. Bush, the freshman, gets the carry across the 20-yard line to about the 18. Gets three. Big third down. A couple things they like out of third down. What I've seen so far today is Ronnie Gent, the big tight end, although he's going off the field. But they like to get LaFleur out on the perimeter, give him a run-pass option. Also, they like Russell. Russell's right here. This has been his target today. See it top left of your screen. One of five third down conversion so far today for Louisville. LaFleur is trying to bring the number up. Drops. Looking there for Russell. Yeah. You just mentioned he was one of their top targets. He is their best receiver. They took his eye off that one. It falls incomplete and sets up fourth down. They had what they wanted. So the floor is looking right to him now. They have what they want, and he's got to secure the football. He got his hands turned the wrong way. Catch the ball with your hands. Hands up on top, not hands underneath. 36-yard attempt for Nate Smith, coming in 14 of 18 on field goals this year. This range is 2 of 2 heading into this one today. But he has enough on it. Crossbar, and it's no good. Is that ever reminiscent of a TCU game as time expired? He hit the crossbar and it fell no good. TCU survived in Fort Worth. Yet again, the crossbar is not the friend of Nate Smith. Can you believe it? Against a pretty stiff breeze. Off his leg, didn't look like he had enough. Rick Minner, Peter Gaduli, you see Dodge a big bull today point game. It's a Aiken Road. Well, Nate Smith said after the TCU kick that almost at that point ended the Horn Frogs' perfect season. And it takes some time to get over it. Chris, he was 
five in that game. And a big miss keeping Cincinnati alive and well. Well, it keeps it a one possession, a one score ball game here with a two point play. That would have put him up by 11, which has been a two possession game. Gino going down talking to his boys maybe giving them each play to play one at a time. And the Bearcats. Booker Van tries to nudge the defensive line along with a Moby Okoye back. LaFue got it Paul. Going to hit as well. It looks like a good snap. It's a little bit behind. The floors does a good job getting it down on time. And Dave, we're trying to look at the win here in the stadium. This is blowing all over the place. The flags on the goalpost aren't blown, but you look at the top of the stadium, the flags are blowing every direction. Seemed like a stiff wind went up in, in, in his face there. Ball really seemed to die off his foot. No question about it. The uprights, very top of the post. Not much activity, at least from that part of the field. Play action. The Dooley has his man. Brought in by Hannibal Thomas, who's got big yards for the Bearcats. Inside the 20. Finally knocked down by Josh Minkin. 63-yard gain. Hannibal Thomas, aren't the Bearcats glad the Juco transfers come along? What I'm telling you here is Cedric, they ran this play earlier to skinny post with Cedric Dolly. Here's a guard pulling around on the blitz. Booker Van picks it up. And a nice job of throwing the ball to Hannibal Thomas behind him. Let him stop making an adjustment away from the DB. And I like the speed after the play turning something into big. And again, momentum on Cincinnati side. But they ran that play in the first half to Cedric Dolly. They come back to it with Hannibal Thomas. Excellent execution. And a good throw by Gino Gadula to make it happen. Big play for UC. The second half, they've had their way offensively with Louisville defense. No question about that. Man, not much this time. No pickup for him as we roll under a minute to go in the third quarter. Again, Book Booker Van misses the cutback lane. It's a wide open cutback lane. If he's able to cut it back to the right, Louisville's defense is all running to the left. If he cut it back, he has big yards. But Cincinnati is dominating the second half. They come out with some fire. And again, a Rick Minner coach football team, I promise you, it will not quit. I've lived in this state for 10 years. I know what kind of coach he is. Kids respond to him. Second and ten for Gaduli. Another play action. And oh, touchdown! Brought in on a 17-yard play to Dennis Hart, the tight end. And Cincinnati scores again. It's a great throw by Gino. No room for error, and he delivers a strike on a seven route or a corner cut by the tight end. Dennis Hart running up, taking to the post, breaking it to the corner of the flag, and Gino laid it right in there on target. What an effort by the UC Bearcat offense. This offense seemed all but dead down 28-7 toward the end of the first half. Remember the fourth and two, Chris, they went for. Booker Van converted. They scored on a Daniels touchdown. And here's Mike Daniels, the true freshman, going for two. He's got it. Guess what, folks? We are all tied. Well, it's what they scored. They're playing them for the Kegonales. Yeah, it's, it's the same play, Dave, that they scored the touchdown in at the end of the second quarter. Daniels on a quick sweep. Here's the touchdown first. Gino Gaduli throwing, delivering a nice touch pass to Hart, the tight end, beating the guy, linebacker Johnson, one-on-one. -on -one. Mike Daniels, you can't see me because I'm 5'7", but I play like I'm 6'5". And here's Hart now. Let's watch him run on the, on the kickoff coverage, see if he's winded. Clark receives inside the 15, lost the ball. It's loose. Yeah, I guess, Bearcats have got it. Guess who caused the fumble? Just like that. Yeah, I pointed it out for a reason, because either he's all jacked up or he's too tired to make a play. But he throws his body in there and knocks the ball out. Antoine Horton, Chris, scoops up a loose fumble, and Rick Metter's team's in business again as their string of dominance continues. Yeah, that's a great effort by Hart of running down on the football field. You know, you make a big play in a touchdown in an important football game, you're winded. Watch Hart, he's gonna come in here and throw his body, he gets turned around, but he'll get his right arm 
Right there. His leg or something got in the way, but that's a great effort by Hart. Now you got to come back and play offense. Well, they give him a breather here. They got him a breather. He needs a breather. That's a great play by Cincinnati special teams. The kicking game's been kind of a problem for Cincinnati today. They've been solid. Shocking mistake there by Broderick Clark, coach, one of the all-time great return men in Louisville history. Another play action. Gadouli in trouble, and down he goes. Flags go down late as well. And there's almost definitely a hold. In fact, quick indication. You know, despite the holding call, again, a good decision by Gino not to force anything to try to get it up back to the line of scrimmage. But penalties. Holding. Offense. Ten-yard penalty. Replay. First down. He, he can't wait right there. He can't wait to get his hands back on to the football. Broderick Clark really looked awkward on that return. Maybe one problem was he had the mouth guard actually on the top of his helmet there outside the face mask. Now, if you notice that, but on the return, it wasn't his mouth. That's uh, trouble. Supposed to have that in there. Maybe he wasn't ready. Who knows? That is the end of three quarters and what has become a very exciting game from Mifford Stadium on the Cincinnati campus. Was once a 28-7 complete overwhelming performance by Bobby Petrino and Louisville. But Rick Miner's team with great quarterback play has come all the way back. After three, it is all time nails. The origin not exactly known. There are different stories. It is a replica of a keg used to ship nails in the old days. The leader started as an exchange between frat houses on the UC and Louisville campuses. Booker Van trying to make the one-handed catch. That falls incomplete. Sets up second and 20 for Gino Gunduli and Cincinnati. Last year, seven zip Cardinal lead at the half. John L. Smith's final game as head coach against a rival Cincinnati team. All the way back came Cincy again, and they stormed the field, Chris, last year. Took the keg of nails away from Louisville. Yeah. They didn't, they didn't wait for any specific ceremony. They just went and took it. A lot of the guys we talked to, Ronnie Gent from Louisville, a tight end, said he wanted to get it back. Big revenge. They remember that moment. Hannibal Thomas, the intended receiver on that fade route. Antoine Harris on coverage. Falls incomplete. And it'll be third and long. Now, remember, they it might be four-down territory down here. Dave, because of the wind, both schools have had trouble. Both kickers have kicking into this end zone or this goal post. Although you couldn't play for a play where you don't need to get 20 yards here, you might want to give your kicker a shot. But I, I would say 30 yards would be the, the field goal that's probably, even though the wind's not blowing right there on your, on your post, it, you see up the flags up high that's blowing hard. You want to give the kick, get the ball down about the, the fifth, 25 yard line and give your kicker a chance. Chet over missed a 48 yarder earlier. Manfredini is two for two, 29, 32 yard range, but that was in the third quarter. The wind going the other way. Gadulli over the middle has a man complete. Thaddeus Lewis brings it in. He is short of the first down. He needed the 18 yard line of Louisville. A nice Locked shot by Johnson. By Gino Gadulli hanging in there, waiting for Thaddeus Lewis to get open, sit down in the middle of the zone, deliver a strike. Chris Manfredini in no hesitation here. Chris will go for the field goal from Rick Minner. He is two for two. We talked about the short range leg he's got, but that was in the third quarter. The wind is swirling quite a bit on the field. 38 yard attempt. Trying to give Cincy its first lead since the opening drive when Kester scored the fullback. He's got it. The freshman Chris Manfredini. Making Rick Minner a happy man. The coach told us he had no idea <laughs> yeah. sometimes what was going to happen with a kick game. The punt or the field goal game this year has been such a mystery. Today, Manfredini has really come through. And the coach hoping his team can not only win the kick and nails, but finish out 6-6 six and six in the regular season. Kicking off. Roderick Clark, the deep man, lets that fall in front of him. That's a free ball. And it's covered by Louisville at the last possible second at the 18-yard line. Colby Smith hopped on the ball, luckily for the Cards. Our KFC exclusive ESPN2 game track at the half. It was Louisville, Chris, thanks to Stefan LaForce. But in the second half, big hits like that from Zach Norton causing some turnovers. Gadouli and Dennis Hart taking advantage, and they have stormed back with 17 in a row. 
see how LaForge responds now. He's been most effective when he's out on the perimeter working using his feet and his arm. Reverse coming, no, Bush keeps it. And the freshman's got plenty of room, Michael Bush! No one's gonna catch him! He will go all the way for a Louisville touchdown! 81 yards for the freshman, Michael Bush! What a run, no flags! The cards indeed do answer. Took them all in one play. See, I wonder if that was an option for Michael Bush. They faked the reverse. Cincinnati had the reverse sniffed out. They had five guys running to the reverse. They might have played it too well. Michael Bush tucked it back in, and he's off to the races. Untouched for 80-plus. Folks, that's 238 pounds of power and speed. 230. Look at the ball move off the foot of Smith with the breeze. But he gauges the angle properly. And suddenly, thanks to Bush, longest TD John of his young career. He's just a true freshman. Right back comes Louisville. They lead by four. Cincinnati actually had a pretty good defense for the reserves. You're going to see the corner come in off the blitz. He's going to come in motion. Right there's a the corner on the blitz. Perfect play for the reserve reverse. Michael Bush fakes it. It's off to the races. They seal. They have a wall. It's like a punt return. And Michael Bush says, man, I like this tailback. Even though I'm a quarterback, I can get used to this. There's the fake. Everybody's running, doing a good job of blocking downfield. They wouldn't have got him for his two-hand touch. Gone. And look at the great downfield block by 78 white Travis LaFue. He was injured earlier. You'll see him right there. Making a nice block to make sure Bush would not be touched knocking down Davin Holly. Yeah, Davin Holly has speed too. Travis LaFue hustling downfield. What, a, what an effort that game. We saw him get rolled up with 700 pounds on his right ankle. But he's out there playing because it's important to him. The kick and nails. That was a kick and nails play. Yeah, it was tough for him. Fourth quarter has been dominant for Louisville all year. That's, you know, that's kind of been the, the way Cincinnati season has been going. Chances to win games, not putting it away. Now we'll see how UC responds after the long run for Bush. Daniels another freshman. He's a true frost on the return, bouncing off tacklers to about the 21, and that's where Cincinnati will take over after the 18-yard return from Mike Daniels. Preseason NIT Championship Feast Week presented by eBay. College Hoops coming your way here on ESPN2, 7 o'clock Eastern Time, Georgia Tech, and 25th ranked Texas Tech and Bob Knight. Mass Mutual Classic as well, 9th ranked Florida, 3rd rated Arizona, 9 o'clock Eastern Time. All tonight on ESPN2, plenty of football in the afternoon, hoops at night. Perfect. For more, log on ESPN.com. Georgia Tech knocked off UConn, right? Number one team. And my Syracuse Orangeman lost. What happened? Charlotte, speaking of Conference USA, raining some threes on the defending national champs. Two-yard pickup from Van. Kerry Rhodes brought him down. Cincinnati again now. They've been in this position before. They have come up short time and again. And remember, this is the last game for 12 seniors. Coach Minner in the locker room counted on his younger guys to send his seniors out a winner. This is a chance to salvage your season. Nobody wants to go out with a losing record. Since he's five and six coming in. Very slim ball hopes for them. Normal showing a blitz. Pass quickly thrown to Ross, who grabs it and stood up. Seven yard gain for Derek Ross. Coming here from Nippert Stadium on the Cincinnati campus. Rigid afternoon for football. Louisville and UC with Ryan Chris Spielman, our entire fabulous crew. Glad you could join us today. World Series of Poker is coming away next on ESPN2. So as we finish business here from the Queen City. Most of so far, 310. Chris yeah, the big third down. Fullback coaster in there. Lead block about 280. Going to lead up in here. Booker Vance been running hard inside. Brief motion for Kester does not help. Van has stood up. The few got there first and knocked him backwards. A three-yard loss. Rhodes involved in the hit as well. 
And Cincinnati has no choice but to punt here. Well, Bobby said, I need to make a play. I saw my brother spring Bush for the touchdown. I need to make a play. Penetration killed it. Nobody cut off the few on the backside. He's able to penetrate, eliminate the cutback, and make a play. Chet Irvin will kick to Robert Haskins. Took a couple steps to his right. I thought he might have fit that for a second. Haskins back badly. It didn't hit him, though, fortunately for Louisville. That's got to make a coach <laughs> panic for a moment. They'll have it at the 25-yard line. With great blocking from a few, they've got to leave. Hey, Aflac, ask about it at work. Pick of nails. And they are going for it today. Louisville has won for the last five of last year. Cincinnati in Kentucky took a 10-point win. Can the cards get it back? Carry from Lionel Gates. He tries the left side, picks up five. Begin this drive, fourth quarter. Chris, crucial moment of the game here as they try to blow up some holes in that Cincinnati defensive line. Run some clock without Eric Shelton, their top running back. Can it be done is the question. Well, it can be done if they start getting five yards of pop on first down because then that opens up a lot of options on second and third down. Cincinnati's got to be solid on run defense here to have a chance to get them off the field. Pitch to Gates. Brace one tackle, lost the ball. Loose again, still loose. Who's got it? Cincinnati, one more time, Zach Norton. Sliding on that far side. Recovers the fumble, fourth turnover of the game. For Louisville, Coach Petrino beside himself, forced fumble there from Doug Monahan, the junior safety. A great job by Zach Norton coming from his backside corner chasing the play down. Gates hits the hole now. He shows burst through the hole. Trying to explode through the hole but gets shot. Somebody get him on the arm. Right there's a good hit by Monahan, getting him on the arm. Forcing the ball. Four Cincinnati guys lose it. But Zach Norton not giving up. Running to the football like you're supposed to. This makes an athletic play covering the loose ball. Outstanding effort by Zach Norton. Chris, I think Zach Norton heard you after he did not track down the fours in the first half of the touchdown run. Fade route looking for Thomas. And that is broken up by Antoine Harris. Falls incomplete. Remember, Zach Norton was the player who tried to track down Stephon LaFours on the 69-yard touchdown run in the first half. Missed him. Didn't tackle him, brought him down on that play. And Thomas had this is a good pass. Harris just got it at the end there. He's played well in the corner for for Louisville, Antoine Harris, and, and went through the went through the scoopers there of Thomas. It's a good throw. See, I like to see the fade stop where you throw it to the backside shoulder of the receiver. That way, the defensive back doesn't have a chance to get a hand on it. Great second half from Norton. Forced the fumble on that big hit earlier in the third quarter, and then recovers that fumble. Here's Van. Stood up, nothing doing as he well, he pushed backwards, loses one. Scott Lopez gets his second tackle. Of the afternoon. Seiko storyline, LaForce. Brilliant throughout the day with two touchdown passes. Gadouli has led his team all the way back, though, with an incredible run in the second half. Bush, the long touchdown, run a career high, 81 yarder for his touchdown. Uh, turnover right. numbers are crucial. That's why it's close. That's why the game is close because of the turnovers. Another critical third down with 10 even to go in the fourth quarter. Shotgun, Gino Gadouli has a man over the middle, it's Lewis. Thaddeus Lewis brings it in through the three-yard line of Louisville, 17-yard pickup. Gabe brought him down from behind, not before another first down play. Uh, playing a zone blitz right here, and I'll tell you, it's a good job of Cincinnati picking it up. Gino Gadouli sets up inside. Ball's tipped a little bit, but Thaddeus Lewis does a great job of concentrating on the football. See, Johnson's got to get back at depth. He was too close to the ball. He's got to get back at depth. He'll knock that ball down instead of tipping it. Great job of Gino stepping up and throwing a strike. Right, and Johnson got a piece of that on the way by. Jones returns to the game. We haven't seen him in some time. Carl Jones, who is so good on that first drive of the day when it was morning, back at 11 a.m. Eastern local time, when we kicked off early. Kester capped it off with a touchdown run from short yards, but Jones had some fumble issues and finally returns now. Carl Jones, I, uh, to me, provides a little bit more vision and experience 
going through that hole where Booker Vance, more of a slasher, Carl Jones can break it. But he fumbled the football. Now Coach Miner's given another opportunity. I guarantee you, hold on to that football. Playing man to man, this is a chance to go up top if you want it. Global shows blitz. They are coming. Fade run. Lots of contact. Daniels throws his man Minkins down. That could be offensive interference. Daniels, a true freshman, trying to do anything possible to avoid the interception. Well, like I said, Dave, they're playing up there tight man to man. A lot of times you'll audibleize to the fade route or takeoff. Just exactly what they did now to see how the officials call it. Well, there's discussion. They're fighting for the ball. You gotta let them play. Archie Dedalier, Conference USA referee, and his crew trying to sort it out. Well, I don't know what the big problem is. It's either offensive or defensive interference. One of the two. A lot of contact, Chris, from Daniels as the ball was in mid-flight. Basically tackling Minkins' his man on the way down. We have offsetting penalties on the play. Double. Interference. Offense. Interference. Defense. Replay and down. I don't know about that one. I, it's, it right here is the press coverage, which converts right into his fade. There's a good job of Minkins getting his hands on. You know, that's on offense. That's an offense. That's a great coverage job by Minkins playing his position, using his body. Tough call against Louisville right there, in my opinion. Tough call. The definition, folks, of pass interference from Daniels, the freshman. Tackle your man. Offsetting penalties. A replay, second and four. Carl Jones, a hole. A few. Along with Robert McCune, they call him the hammer, the team's defensive leader and a captain. I haven't mentioned McCune's name much. For three years, was a member of the National Guard, and for two, six months since, saw time in Kuwait and Korea on peacekeeping missions. Well, he packed his biceps and triceps with him on this trip. He's sporting it. I, uh, the one thing I like about Carl Jones right there, too, is he's hitting it in the hole. He, 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 sees a, he sees a little gap, and he's gone. Big third down. Look for Louisville to blitz. They've been blitzing in run situations all day. They're walking up. They're tight. Since he Here comes. 12 on their conversion so far, it is Jones scampering through. Looks like he's got enough. Brent Johnson brought him down. Spot is favorable. Just needed the 22, and he's inside the 21. It will be a first down. For you see the drive continues. One problem Louisville's had is holding on to the football, especially in the second half. It starts with Zach Colton. Bringing the wood! Oh. Ed Hart, after he catches the touchdown pass, knocks the ball out on kickoff coverage. And good job of UC running the ball. Then Monahan putting the helmet on the ball. Zach Norton again hustling from the backside corner, recovering the fumble. Outstanding effort. The Jones first down run. Play action again. Gadouli has his man. Brought in by Dennis Hart, the tight end. Spun down by Kerry Rhodes. Got maybe a yard on the play. I got tackled by his hand warmer. I don't, I don't think you need hand warmers in football. I see quarterbacks and receivers with hand warmers. Chris, these guys are wearing gloves. Why do they need hand warmers? Yeah, you don't need hand warmers. I guess, especially when a defense can tackle you by the hand warmer. Or loosen the hand warmer up. If it's a Keggerdales game, you got to lose the hand warmers, Chris. Everybody's got hand warmers. You need hand warmers. It's about 30 degrees, folks, in case you're wondering. Man, yeah, yeah, it, it was minus 20, all right. <laughs> Second and nine, quarterback yeah. dropped to do it. Puts his head down, Rhodes. He's there for his seventh tackle of the game, along with Rod Day, the linebacker. Don't forget Saturday, ESPN, a full day of college football. First at noon Eastern, Toledo meets Josh Harris and Bowling Green. Mac West title hanging in the balance at 3.30 Eastern, Ralph Region and the Gator Bowl bound Terps taking on Wake Forest. That game in the ACC, Alabama, Hawaii on the road out in Honolulu, Oahu. 7.45 Eastern time start. 
That's a big game involving LSU USC as they fight for a spot in the national championship game. Yeah, Toledo and Bowling Green about 20 miles apart. That's a great rivalry in Ohio. Here in Ohio, great game going on. Gadulli in lots of trouble. Cannot get away. Brought down by Brent Johnson. Strong safety on the blitz comes in. It's the same thing all day, Dave. They're, they've been bringing their safeties up and dropping linebackers playing zone blitz. That time they did a better job of getting off blocks, getting to the cornerback. Gino was late, stepping into the pocket, thus getting sacked. 38-yard attempt now for Chris Manfredini. Goes for another field goal. He's been a big factor in this second half, leading the UC comeback. Got another one. And we have a one-point game. Chris Manfredini on the day is four for four. Nails a 38-yarder, keeping us very tight in Cincy. Mega Nails is on the line. It was won by Cincy last year. Louisville overall in the last five years has been dominant in this series. And thanks to Manfredini's fourth field goal of the second half, we've got a great game, folks. Buckle up. The last 521. Mm. However, out of bounds it goes on Manfredini's kick. That's a procedure call. And Wolfel gets good field position again at the 35-yard line. I'm looking at Rick Minner right now on the sidelines, just walking and hit, shaking his head. And, and Illegal procedure, kicking team. You give High rule. Ball is put on the 35-yard line. First down. You give him that type of field position, and that's the second time he's kicked it out of bounds. He's been stout on field goals, but kickoffs have been struggling. Don't forget, Louisville converted a two-point play earlier because they missed an extra point. They had an extra point blocked. If they would not have converted that two-point play, we'd have been one point swing the other way. World Series of Poker, folks, coming up. And if you're tuning in for that, stay with us here for the end of this exciting game. Regular season finale for each in the Conference USA. Gates trying to right side. Not much because Jamie Murphy's third tackle, the junior from Tallahassee. We know Louisville is bowl bound. We're not sure where yet. If they win, they're nine and three, Chris. Champion of the conference automatically goes to the Liberty Bowl. The GMAC Bowl in Mobile next, along with the Hawaii Bowl, Fort Worth Bowl, new game in New Orleans. A game you've seen. And Rick Minner's team lost to North Texas last year. North Texas headed back again this season. GMAC Bowl, TCU turned down a GMAC Bowl because it interfered with their academics. And I wonder if that was a BCS Bowl game played in the middle of December if they would have turned it down because of academics. Just Good a, it's a fair question to ask. Good question. Play action. The force. Drops. Looking there for Jen, who's had such a great day near the 40-yard line. That was nearly picked by Cincinnati. Bowl eligible so far, TCU with a great season at 10 and 1. Southern Miss undefeated so far in league play. They still have to take on East Carolina tomorrow. TCU plays at SMU. We're assuming those will be pretty much automatic wins for both of those teams. Memphis, a great year. As they've had their best stretch since 1973. Yeah, we just found Bigfoot right there in that shot. <laughs> the force keeps it. Stefan with flags down, trying to power his way over the 45, which he needed for the first down. And we have got a hole. It's coming back for Louisville. Kaysan yeah. Love was the one being held. He got up in a panic. It's a good job of penetrating by Kaysan, forcing the hold by Louisville. I believe the hold. I don't want to call a lot offensive line, oh, I'm not sure, but I believe it was. Ten yard penalty. Replay. Yeah, you, you want to see the guard pull around right there. A few. No, that's, that's excuse me, that's Spencer holding. Good job by Kaysan Love penetrating, forcing a hold. Seven penalties, 50 yards. In reverse ground for Bobby Petrino and Louisville. Now a crucial third and 18 with a momentum squarely riding on the side of Cincinnati. Take away the Long Bush touchdown run. And it's been all Bearcats in the second half. But that one 81 yard burst keeps Louisville up by one point. Oh, we got a little bit of confusion down there. The defensive coordinator for Cincinnati is going crazy on the sidelines. Blitz coming. Pass incomplete, looking for Gates. Well, Forrest got it off. Jason Russell was right in his face. 
And Cincinnati again will force a punt with 4.09 to go in this thrilling fourth quarter. Yeah, Roberts to the defensive end, getting penetration, disrupting the timing of the screen, forcing LaForge to throw off his back foot, making a low throw. Gino Gadula said, I, hey, I want to send my seniors out a winner. Give me a shot. He's going to have a shot with 4.09. Both teams with three timeouts left. Could not ask for a better finish here. And wrap up the regular season for each. Brent Moody will kick to Thaddeus Lewis. Releases outside his 15. Lewis lets it go. It could be a loose ball that hit a Cincinnati player on the way down is the question. You know the problem I've seen this game, both wow. teams, they're not fielding punts. They're letting the ball hit. There's no communication. You've got to be able to field punts to save yourself field position. Neither team has done that today. That was Zach Norton, Chris. The ball almost hit him right in the back and would have been loose. Able to cover up. Lewis let it go. His teammate Norton, luckily, right place at the right time. We mean barely. It's a one-point game. From Louisville to Cincinnati, Ohio. That's why they play for the keg of nails. Big rivalry for these Conference USA teams. 357 and counting separate Louisville from getting the keg right back where they think it belongs. Run there from Jones for five yards on first down. Have plenty of time for Cincinnati. You have three timeouts left and three forwarding ticking. No sense to get hurried unnecessarily. See, Louisville's looking at the sidelines. They snapped the ball. They have them guessing. Been happening all day, Chris. Yeah. Jones stays in the backfield. And Karras lunging forward. Needs a 40 for a first down. He's got that and more. As he broke a tackle late. Ended up being dragged down by Marcus Jones. 11-yard pickup for yeah. Carl Jones. I love what Carl Jones is doing. Remember, he got benched early in the game for fumbling, but he didn't put his head down. No, he's coming out, and he's fighting and crawling and scratching for everything he can get, and he's running the ball hard. He's been the difference maker so far this fourth quarter for Cincinnati. Chris, those are big plays for Louisville. Shaky tackling might do them in here. In the final moments, they've had all sorts of struggles stopping Cincinnati in the second half. Play action, Gadouli has a little time, has a man. Brought in by Dennis Hart. Makes a great move. Ten yard line. Five down to the four. Finally stopped by Brent Johnson. Not before a 51 yard pickup to Dennis Hart. And Cincinnati on the doorstep again. Big play. Brent Johnson will lose his feet right here. First of all, Randy Hart again on the corner right or seven cut. The ball's thrown behind away from Brent Johnson. It's a great adjustment by Hart to come back for the football and a good job by Brent Johnson hustling after slipping. But he's got to check his shoes. You cannot fall down if you're a man to man. Number one rule, keep your feet. A great throw by Gino, throwing it away from the coverage. Murray and Kester in. Kyle Kester beats for his second touchdown of the game. He's got it. Touchdown Cincinnati. That little Antoine Harris had a, had a hard time there with Big Kester now. Four-yard touchdown run, the second of the game for him, second of his career at Cincinnati. Well, they ran a play, Dave, where they, this time they brought George Murray in motion. And like they want to do the quick handoff like they did with Mike Daniels, but this time George Murray was the decoy. They gave the ball to Kester up the middle, and, he, and they, he's listed at 240. Now, if he's 240, I'm 350. <laughs> More like 260, I think, yeah. is what the coaches have told us about Kester's size. Did not play at Indiana, transferred from the Cincinnati area. Going for two here. Going Good for move. two, trying to extend this to a seven-point lead. Kester stays in. Play action. They fake the hand up to Murray, but he's still got it. Got plenty of time. Now throws, looking for Kester. Diving! And falls incomplete as he makes a tremendous effort. Two-point conversion fails, and it stays a five-point game. Plenty of time for Stephon LaFours and Louisville once they get the ball back. Well, the one thing to look at right now is you got to kick the ball inbounds. You do not want to give Louisville the ball in the 35-yard line again. That's to remember now, he's had two kicks out of bounds. 
Manfredini. Here's hard to get in man-to-man -man coverage on Brent Johnson. He's running what they call a seven cut, which is a corner route. Johnson had position on the outside. Gino recognizes, delivered the ball to the inside. Hart adjusts, then you give it to the big fella. Kester, look at Antoine. That's like a pinball going on. There's a two-point conversion. They're going to try come with a bootleg. Guys are covered. Kester sneaks out to the flat, recognizing his quarterback's in trouble. And almost makes a great one-handed catch. Good job by Louisville. Now, now instead of having the decision to go for two, they need to put the ball in the end zone for the win. This is what it boils down to, Dave. We talked about this in the opening. Cincinnati's defense, which is third to conference, 18th in the nation, against the number one offense in the conference in Louisville. This is where the matchup is. Strength against strength. Who's going to win? Let's watch and see. Manfredini, Chris, has had his troubles on kickoffs, yeah. not field goals. He's got four of those all in the second half. But he's kicked a couple out of bounds. Procedure call, giving Louisville the ball for 35, and he blows off the tee again. He's having trouble teeing up, but he sees teeing it straight up. He doesn't have any tilt to the ball. And the reason why he's teeing it straight up is I think they're trying to pop it up. A directional kick, but if you directional kick, kick it within in the, in the white lines. Don't kick it outside the white lines. You don't want to give this offense any help. They're a powerful, explosive offense. Directional kick. Victor Glenn takes it at the 27. To lose one tackle is outside the 30 to about the 31. And that's where Louisville takes over after we check in with Reese Davis. Get out of Mar D. <laughs> that's a keg of nails guy. Patriotic keg of nails guy. Kester, you got that right. From Elder High School right here in Cincinnati. And the four is over the middle, incomplete, looking for Jen. As it falls to the turf outside the 40. 220? Oh. I don't know. Oh. 250 to 260 is what Kester's going. Right. He's up there. You're kind, man. He's a big one. Yeah. What a second half for the Bearcats in what could be their final game of the year. In all likelihood, his. Remember, rumors, too, that uh, Rick Minner might be in trouble. Just rumors or, or stories we hear. His kids are playing well for Coach Minner. He's done a good job of keeping them focused. University denies that there's been any decision made on Minner's status, but he will meet with Bob Goyne, the AD, as he always does after the season. LaFour is in trouble. Fires from his 25, incomplete, looking for Haskins. Broken up by Davin Hawley at the 40. Of the Bearcats, third down. That's a great job by Davin Hawley coming in and with great closing speed. You want to see that on your corners when Haskins has a little bit of space. That ball's in the air. Hawley showed me a fifth gear. Guys play fast when that ball's in the air. They got a shot to make a play. Did a good job of avoiding contact. Third down number is not favorable for the cards at all. This is a huge play. You have to figure they'll go for it, though. It's Two minutes left, down by five. Shotgun the force. Not much pressure, has Jen, has a first down. Outside the 45-yard line of the 46 of the Cardinals, Monahan brought him down, fifth tackle of the game for the safety. 15-yard gain, what a conversion for the force on third and long. And so the middle linebacker made a mistake. If you're gonna cut in front of a guy, you better make a play. If not, stay behind him and make the tackle. He went to make a play. Jen caught the ball behind him. He's off to the races. Offensive line needing critical blocks here. And a flag. Again, the pursuit. Yep. Yep. Five yards. Look at Bobby. Down, still remains one. Now, Bobby's mad because they, uh, Cincinnati started tiptoeing, showing blitz. We talked about it earlier. Guys want to get out and get to their protection. Offensive linemen get anxious, start moving. You get 320 moving backwards, it's tough to stop. Taking a lot of time here, Chris. I'm surprised after the first down catch from Jen. They got five. It's not a field goal. Here's Jen again on the reception outside the 45 to the 46. Hagler brought him down. Five yard gain, and now. Louisville will use one of its timeouts. Still two remaining for the Cardinals with a minute 20 to go. And is throwing fourth quarter. Can Bobby Petrino's team rally again? Down by five. Caganales on the line from Cincinnati. Fourth quarter. Rivalry game. Conference USA finale this year for each. 
LaForce has been brilliant, at least in the first half, unstoppable. But since he has had answers, here's pressure on the junior quarterback. Downfield has a man, Russell J.R. Russell brings it in. He's into the end zone. Touchdown, Lobo! Can you believe the force to Russell? 54 yards, and the Cardinals regain the lead in a thriller from Cincy. What a play. First of all, it's a great job of the force avoiding pressure buying time with his feet not to run the football but to find a throwing lane and delivers a strike to Russell on a deep post who beats Hawley. That's a great throw on the run, throwing it back across his body to the post where Russell comes from the backside, throws a strike on time and on target. Chris is going to take a timeout here with one remaining to think over a possible two-point conversion to at least guarantee a tie and force overtime so Gino Gadulli lead them back into field goal range. Remember Manfredini is 4 for 4 in the second half in field goals. It's a great job and now he's buying time and why he wasn't looking to run the football his eyes never left downfield. He was buying time for Russell to get to the post where he delivers the strike on the run. Russell catching it and does a great job of carrying Hawley into the end zone not to be denied. Again, see, watch him step up. Look at his eyes. His eyes are staying downfield. His eyes aren't looking to run and make a play. His eyes are looking downfield for the open receiver. The box time with his feet to throw the ball and not run the ball. That's a sign of a mature quarterback. Now, on the two-point play, just, just there's about three or four different two-point plays each team has in their arsenal. The last time, they ran an old tackle trap with the quarterback keeping the ball. They were able to convert. Now, they like Ronnie Gent down here. Ronnie Gent's a big-time player and a big-time tight end. He's a guy they like to go to in this type of situation if they can get him matched up one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker. If I'm Cincinnati, I play man-to-man, -man, I come after him. you got that back end line right here. See this end line back here? That's your 12th man. Go ahead and get pressure. Make him make a decision. Russell and Haskins are split to the left of LaFour. He's going to run again That's for it, play. and he is in again. Same play. Just the second two-point conversion of the day for LaFour. Bobby Petrino's team leads by three with a minute ten left in the fourth quarter. What a day for Stefan LaForce. First to J.R. Russell on the long touchdown connection. And now LaForce, who has two touchdown passes, two two-point PAT conversion runs, and a touchdown run. Who wins the keg and nails? We'll find out. Last gas for UC when we return to Cincinnati. Pick your head up, fool. Let's go. Pick your head up, indeed. <laughs> J.R. Russell, Stephon LaFour's congratulatory remarks after the long touchdown play. Russell's over 1,000 yards receiving on the season. He's at 1,044 now. Lewis will take it. Thaddeus looks for a gap. Bump down, 26-yard line of Cincinnati, and that is where... UC takes go over with its final chance. Yeah, take, take a look at the two-point conversion here. It's the same play. It's a tackle trap with the quarterback leading the few, leading them up in through the hole. That's the same two-point play that they converted early in the ball game. Surprise, Cincinnati didn't have the red flag up. Again, there's only so many two-point plays you could run. They went back to what was successful. They didn't stop it then, and they didn't stop it now. We called it up here. Say, hey, there's a, there's a quarterback trap. First 1,000-yard receiving season for Louisville since Deion Branch did it in 2001. J.R. Russell does it here today. Can Gino rally his team again over the middle? He's got an end. Complete to Ross. Close to midfield. Big pickup you know, you know, from Derek Ross of 22 yards. And Cincinnati on the move with plenty of time here, Chris, and three timeouts. Yeah, just a re reminder, though, in first down situations in college football, the clock does stop. So you don't have to burn timeouts right now if you're UC. Plenty of time. And Manfredini has hit four field goals all in the second half. Two in the third quarter, two in the fourth. Poker is coming up next. The poker fans stay with us. This is a thrilling finish. Gadula is keeping. Gino slides. After a pickup of about eight yards. Timeouts. Two to 44. A timeout here for Cincy. 36 ticks to go in regulation. They wasted time there. They lost about five seconds. You have to have a guy who's designated one of your receivers when the ball goes down has got to get to an official and give him the T.O. sign. And 
for Dini is just a freshman, folks. A lot of pressure on him. Chet Urban had a chance in this field goal again. That was into a stiff win from about 48 yards into that win. That would have been about a 58 yarder. A lot of some points left on the board. We have 83 points up on the board now. There were some points left on the field though today. That was way back in the first quarter, and since then, Manfredini has taken over the kicking duties and nailed four in a row. But I got a feeling, though, if it's 40 plus, he might go back to Chet Urban because Chet Urban does have the stronger leg of the two. If you're thinking distance, folks, 23 yards right now is what Cincy needs to get to a 38 yard range where Manfredini has been so effective. He's nailed two from that exact distance today. It looks to me like he has room for 40. 40 to 42. Anything above 42, I believe Coach Minner might go. There's Chet Urban warming up, getting up the big leg. Long range guy. Manfredini for point after touchdowns and accuracy. They need three to tie and force overtime. 36 seconds to go on this throw. Gadu with some pressure. Got it off. Incomplete looking for Jones. That'll be third down and short. Obviously four down territory for UC in the final moments. Now see they have the sideline or the flat part of the field which is the outside part of the field open because Louisville obviously does not want to get out of a big play. They got a short area open. They should work that short area a little bit to give themselves an opportunity to play for the tie. If you get the big play fine but you want to get in position at least give yourself a chance to tie the football game. 330 yards and counting. Lewis has got it far side first down to the 38. Clock will stop. Just like that, David. Again, they have to play soft in coverage. They're going to throw what they call a little hitch route out to the flat part of the field or the outside part of the field. It gives you the opportunity. Plus a timeout. Cincinnati. Big second call timeout. One timeout left for Rick Minner. Down by three. Louisville has one play stoppage remaining. Gives us time to tell you about Friday night preseason at on ESPN2. Feast Week presented by eBay, Georgia Tech, Texas Tech. The Red Raiders ranked 25th in the nation for Bob Knight, 7 o'clock Eastern time. Also at 9 Eastern, Florida and third ranked Arizona in the Mass Mutual Classic. All tonight on ESPN2. Feast Week presented by eBay. For more, log on to ESPN.com. College basketball tonight. Great college football today. Conference USA style. You need to get the ball down to about the 23 yard line, possibly the 23 and the 23 and a half yard line to give yourself a 40 yard field goal attempt. Usually the spot is seven yards from the line of scrimmage. Times longer field attempts, they move it back because the ball has to be driven. Lewis, Dolly, Derek Ross. Hannibal Thomas, four wideouts in the game for Gadula. Booker Van is the running back next to him in the shotgun formation. 25 ticks to go, fourth quarter. On first down, some pressure. Force left. Gadula fires. Has a man. Incomplete drops. Thaddeus Lewis was there on the move in the left sideline. He lost the handle before he got hit. They had it. Thaddeus Lewis does a good job of turning the route up, adjusting to his quarterback. All he has to do is bring it in. What happens, he takes his eye off the ball before you get the catch. He saw the safety coming over, waiting to deliver the whack. He's got to catch the football. Critical drop for Rick Maynard's hopes to come back and tie this game. 16 seconds left. Middle of the field is still open play now. On second down. Pressure from behind, and down it goes to Dula. Timeout. They need it right away. Marcus Jones sacks him from behind. And Cincinnati in huge trouble with just 10 seconds to go. It's their last timeout. Final timeout. Now again, because of the clock stopping on the first down situation, you do not have to go to the end zone right here. You'll have time to get the ball downfield. The clock will stop, then you'll have time to clock the ball. Spike the ball into the ground to get your field goal team on the field.
So it doesn't have to be a sideline route. Just something to get a first down. You have to have a first down. You gotta down. have a first down to stop the clock. And, and Cincinnati's got to, you know, they, they cannot let it get pressure with four men. Louisville came with four man pressure right there. That's a no no. You got five guys to block four. You have to be able to hold them out. Junior from Alex Joe, Florida. Marcus Jones brought him down from behind. First sack of the game. Third tackle. Poker is coming up next. Perhaps in about 10 game time seconds. Perhaps if UC can convert a little bit longer. Chet Urban does have the leg, and the wind's been swirling down there. It comes down to this. The keg of nails on the line. Nine win season on the line for Louisville. Cincinnati against its arch rival, trying to even its record at six and six in perhaps the final game of its season. Whistles blow, no play. You're wide open. Timeout call by Louisville. Timeout. Second call, timeout. We're going to put 10 seconds back on the clock then, right? They called the ball timeout before the snap. Please reset the clock. Thank you. To read 10 seconds. 1-0. What a game. Yeah, it's, it's great <laughs> football. We've game. seen everything today. Yeah, Thank uh, you. The, the effort by both teams has been outstanding. Coach Bobby Petrino wants a timeout. He doesn't like what he's got going defensively. He wants to see what they're in offensively. Is that a coverage issue or a pass rush issue? You want to give yourself the best situation possible as far as your coverage goes. They're going to rush four. It might not be a bad idea to even drop another guy off in coverage and rush three. And remember, with 10 seconds to go, with the clock stopping on first down, the whole field is in play. You do not have to work the sidelines. You can work the middle of the field. The clock will stop. You hustle down, you spike the ball, and give yourself an opportunity for a field goal. It's going to have to be pretty fast. Do they go for the end zone here? Or listen to Chris Spielman's advice and get a chunk of it? Watch right here. Marcus Jones has been a guy that's been getting a good get off on the snap of the football. On third down. Fires near side, incomplete. Looking for Cedric Dolly. Elvis Doerville with pressure. And now it is with just six seconds. Hail Mary time for Gino Gadulli in Cincinnati. Chris, you said it. Four men. Pressure. Yeah. Now they're just going to come with three. Yeah. Got the Hail Mary set up over here. Six seconds to go. Gino's got to make sure he throws the ball high enough to get his receivers time to get down there. To the end zone, but no one near it for Cincinnati, and it goes out of bounds. It's incomplete. Here, there come, here comes Louisville now. They're going for the keg and else. And it's all over. The yep. Cardinals take back the keg of nails in a Conference USA thriller. 43 to 40. What a game today from Nippert Stadium. A great game. Great game by both teams. Showed a lot of grit, guts, determination. Epitomizes college football. That's why college football is king.